Hello everybody, Messi Coda back again with another live dev interview. This time it's with the creator of Rayfire himself, Mr. Vadim. That's right, if you want to destroy things, anything, blow anything up, well, now you can with the amazing Rayfire. So sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you all in a second. Everybody sitting at home in front of you, Google watches your... Amazon mirrors, your Alexa TVs, give a warm and messy welcome to Mr. Vadim, the genius of Rayfire, not just for Unity, but for the entire world. Welcome, Vadim! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so? Well, uh, welcome, we, I'm going to say, because we, we had this chat, you and me, a little bit earlier today, when we were testing. Yep. And you're from Russia. But yep. not the normal kind of Russia <laughs> that we all think about. So you're from a special Russia, a Russia yeah, this, with love. This is exclave, ex a Russian exclave. It looks like you know it's normal because there's lots of Russian writing everywhere, and there's some water. That's the first thing that people that you would make you go, hmm. There's some water. Is this a lake? No. It's the sea. Which sea, I hear you ask? Well, the Baltic Sea. But that's Poland and Latvia and Estonia and Denmark. Yes, but it's also Russia. This is, this is bizarre. So you are in the best part of Russia if you want to go watching the Champions League football. No, oh, I guess so. I want to ask chat. Chat, did any of you know that this existed? Who in chat knew that Russia still had a little slice? It's like the game of risk. It is like the game of risk. <laughs> well, that's exactly where I am right now. And you are you a full-time developer for a game developer now or or is this is this a hobby for you? Well, it was a hobby, but now this is full time because, well, basically it's enough to uh, support family and uh, continue development. So uh, it's enough for me. So it's full time. But right. at, at the same time, it's hobby because I'm not doing this because I have to. I like doing it and I don't have to do anything else. So it's kind of both. It's hobby and full time. You get paid for doing something you love. Well, yeah, this is uh, the best thing you can do in your life, I mean, getting paid for what you like to do. That, that, that is, you nearly had, you nearly had me crying, that then. That was so beautiful. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was trying to, to, to explain this to every my friend. Unfortunately, not all of them kind of understood this <laughs> good enough to change something. Did, did they life. say they want more money instead? Well, yeah, this is uh, what I see, that people more, uh, they want to get more money, this is their main target, and this is why they're actually not getting uh, money, <laughs> because uh, it's hard to compete uh, doing something you don't like with people who actually like doing this, because you will always lose. If you do something, something for money, and someone else will do the same, but because he likes to do this, you can't compete with such people if you don't like what you do. I love that. I love that sentiment. That is, that is so true. No, yeah. And it's um, uh, it, it it's like, if you're um working for somebody else, and all day long, all you can think about is when the clock is gonna hit, so you can run home, and carry on working on on your own stuff, or or, or doing something else. Then you're never really gonna be concentrating, um. So, how long have you been working on making Rayfire? Then I, I imagine Rayfire is something that took, you know, like a hundred years to build because it's so amazing. Well, I think it's about thirteen or fourteen years. Wow! Like when I first, when I wrote first, uh, when I released on public my first script for Three Ds Max. Uh, well, and uh, it's about two years since we released uh, Unity version. Oh wow! So it, it, it took that. It took 
um, what, what's what, it's like 12 years to get to, to Unity from, from 3DS Max. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, it's not like I was, <laughs> I was uh, walking towards Unity the whole time. Uh, just, uh, I just realized that uh, there's a game uh, game, how should I say this? That this is future. I mean, 3ds Max is great uh, software, but it's for offline usage. I mean, you open your scene, you create something, and then you render this into image, and that's all basically, right? Uh, it's kind of I call this offline yeah. way to work. And the game uh, with games, whatever you write, plugin software, it actually has to run with the game every time uh, someone launch this game so for me it was more something more interesting because it works in real time it has to work in real time in runtime and this is kind of uh, challenging something challenging because it must there must be completely different challenges that so. yeah that's also another thing why i wanted to uh, move to unity because because basically i was starting to learn 3ds max because i wanted to work uh in game industry, uh, but then I went to some kind of visual effects uh, area, so that was kind of the uh, the way to get back to games, to be close to games again. Oh wow! So so your your full time job was working in VFX. Oh uh, well, it wasn't VFX. I was generalist. I worked for about maybe four years in the company, and uh, we have to have to do everything like modeling, texturing, animation, all kind of stuff because there are very few of us, and uh, we have to provide full kind of full cinematic. The only thing we didn't do is sound, so uh, we had to kind of learn everything we can to do. And we at some point, mistakes. I learned. Uh, I started to learn accidents. programming. I mean, it wasn't you, programming. You were you were a journalist. Uh, gen generalist. Yeah. Yes. Yes. K kind of uh, someone who have to do. Oh, generalist. Not, yeah. Yes. Yes. I thought you meant like oh, I was. I thought you meant like a journalist for the newspaper. <laughs> and I was going to no, go. No, sorry, well, I was going to go. My... Wow, a journalist <laughs> who does three D. Journalist. Yeah. My pronunciation. Uh, it's not great, so uh, yeah, I was not spe specializing in something, something uh, uh, one, something one, and uh, have to have to learn, had to learn uh, whatever my boss will tell me to do. Do you know what, Vadim? I'm disappointed now that you weren't a journalist who was doing 3D, 3D stuff, because that would have been awesome. Like, like, wow! Oh my God, he's that working for. Uh, the Russian media, uh, and and he has to go out interview people on the street, and then get back into the office, edit it all together, <laughs> do all the 3D visual effects, and, and go home and and make the kids dinner as well. He's a, he is amazing. <laughs> he is incredible. It's ne you know it's nearly as good. I'd say it's nearly as good. I will try to pronunciate better <laughs> next time. Something like this. <laughs> It's better, it's better than me doing my Russian. Oh, by the way, you, you gave me a promise, didn't you? Yep, about song? Yeah, about song. Uh, you want to song it, uh, you want me to sing it right now? Yeah, let's 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 do it at the start cuz cuz uh, well, okay. I mean, I, I, don't, uh, I don't want you to do it at the end when when you when you're going to leave. I want you to do it at the start <laughs> so you're stuck. Should uh, should I explain what this song is about or just sing it? Um, sing it first and explain okay. later. В лесу родилась елочка, в лесу она росла. Зимой и летом стройная зеленая была. Should I continue? I love it. Yeah, do do another. Метель ей пела песенку, спи елочка, bye bye. Мороз снежком укутывал, смотри, не замерзай. I love it. I guess. I love well, it. This is, uh, this is a lullaby uh, song. Uh, since my, I have a kid, he's two years old, so this is something uh, common for me these days. What, what, what is the actual, I mean, can you translate it to English? Does it, does it translate or does it? Uh, well, it's a song about uh, the tree, you know, this, uh, I forgot how this tree called. You know this uh, when you let me let me just Google it. 
it's not solution. A, it's not a scary tree, is it? No, no. This is uh, the, the <laughs> herring bone, right? Herring bone. It's, it's cause fear, small fear. You know, you know the English "Rocker by baby" in the tree top. Do you know that one? Oh uh, nope. Because that is a horrific stalk song to sing a child. Because it's about uh, like the, the 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 cradle falling, and like you know the baby's baby go to sleep or you or your yes yes your this is kind of song you sing to your baby when he's about to sleep <laughs> like go to go to sleep or the cradle will fall down ah, and you and no, you no, no. <laughs> and, and you will die a horrific death no 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 this is this is, this is a good song <laughs> <laughs> see the English songs are not they sound nice in English you know but they they've got a dark sinister meaning. Uh, but at least the Russian songs seems to be all beautiful and sweet. Well, I guess uh, child songs which you sing to your child they have to be beautiful. <laughs> Otherwise, you haven't heard child, the songs that I sing to child my children. Won't sleep well, <laughs> my my kids go, Daddy, please don't sing us another song to sleep. <laughs> I have nightmares. <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to learn to be strong, son, because. Soon, the werewolves will come, and you need to defend us. Ah, Daddy, no! My son's really scared of werewolves and vampires now. So uh, he goes, "I like it when you're streaming because you're upstairs, next to the, next my bed, because the office is right next door to their bedroom." And I said, "You like it because I'm upstairs? What to keep the monsters away from your door?" <laughs> As a joke. <laughs> And he's like, no, Daddy, why did you say monsters? And I was like, oh, Daddy, I'm only joking. There aren't really monsters hiding behind your door. Maybe. <laughs> this this actually reminds me the Love, Death and Robots season two. Did you see it? Um, Love, Death and Robots. Yeah, there's a there's a movie called All Through the House. This is one I like the most. There's about well, actually, I won't spoil spoil you. <laughs> I've I've it's seen better. Love and I saw the 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 monsters one. Love yeah, and monsters. Yeah, yeah, the monsters uh, and the ch two children. So is is there is there a, a, a series then? Well, just one. I mean, they have like eight episodes and. Uh, they're not connected anyhow with each other, but this what your song remind me about this episode. Oh wow, I'm gonna have to watch that because I yeah, I love that movie. With your child, <laughs> with your child. Do, do you know what Vadim? When he was a baby, okay, we used to watch The Walking Dead with him. I, uh, he was in this pram, and he I I was positive that they knew nothing about what they saw that would be scary because they hadn't been trained to be scared of anything. Um, and we, when it, when they got too violent, oh, you're trying, we, we, we are, we're going to do winners. Yes, we are going to do, we're going to do raffles and we're going to be talk, showing off race fire, <laughs> but we're talk we're talking important things at the moment about monsters and parenthood. So I was, I turned the, the cot away from the TV. Because I'm a good dad, with him, right? And when the when the zombies were eating people's faces, I was like, okay, that he doesn't need to see that. You know, he's he's three months old. He doesn't need to see zombies eating faces. So I turned him away, and then he started laughing, re like really loud <laughs> laughing. I'm like, what is he laughing at? And the he was facing a window, and the the blinds were closed black blinds so it called it created a mirror perfect mirror uh, and he I was see. watching the tv of the zombies <laughs> eating people's faces <laughs> and he thought that was hilarious so i would i was sure he was going to grow up and not be scared of zombies but now uh i made him watch the walking dead the other day when now he's seven, he's seven years old and he and he doesn't like it it doesn't i'm joking chat i didn't make you watch the walking dead i'm joking i'm joking Oh my word! I'll, I'll get arrested for that one, buddy. I'm telling you. Now, uh, we've had if people are wondering what the what the story that was. We've had our song, which was very important uh, because uh, it means Vadim is brave, and he's brave enough also to give us a prize, a raffle. We're going to raffle later on. So if you are still in chat later on, everyone, uh, then don't forget to do exclamation mark raffles later on because you could win a copy of. 
uh, Ray Fire and possibly a Formula One racing car. One of the two. We're raffling one of those two things today. Either it's going to be Ray Fire for Unity or a Formula One racing car. Do you know which one it's going to be? I don't know. Could be any of them. Now, going back to Ray Fire and your 14 year journey to get here, I'm just. You gave me a playlist of different videos to look at while we're chatting. Yeah, this is, was, this is the first test which I made uh, with plugin. And kind of. And this is the first show reel which I uh, used uh, first. Results which people used in their production and TV shows and uh, ads. Wow. So all this is, this is 3D Studio Max, all this stuff. Yes, of course. This is 3D Studio, only 3D Studio Max. And as you can see, there's a Blur Studio already used it. I kind of wanted to work to this company. And this actually was the reason why I started to learn everything, and especially visual effects. I wanted to get a job at their company. And uh, I decided, this is actually this shot I created by myself. Oh, wow. With, uh, actually, uh, I have to say which one with this uh, destruction dome destruction because uh, I guess the sound is uh, there is a lack with sound, right? I, I am, yeah, so if you're yeah, because I'm watching and I'm saying that I did I worked on this <laughs> shot and probably people watching something else. Let me, let me, if I share my moment. screen with you, actually. You might, you'll be, you'll be quick. Well, there's a, there's a, the stadium yeah, yeah. dome, and he was crashing, and this is, this is a shot I was working for. Uh, I have already forgot this show name. Like yeah, there you go. when, when all people will, will vanish. Yeah, that was just the first show reel. There wasn't much to show. There a second. Here we go. Uh, I'm sharing my screen with yeah, you on, on yeah, this now. one, this yeah. one, this dome light crash. Actually, it wasn't that hard. Just, just sitting and demolishing stuff. <laughs> but this company, so you, so you wanted to get a job there, and you made Rayfire. Well, yeah, this is an interesting story because uh, I ha I saw in um, on YouTube, they they have uh, the script called Impact System Tool, and it allowed to create shooting. And back then, it was really hard to create something like shooting. I mean, quickly in a couple of minutes. It took like days to set up something like this. And uh, they have this uh, script. It could create shooting in kind of in a, in a minute. So, and I was trying to create some kind of kick-ass show reel with a lot of distractions and visual effects. I wanted to show this reel to them so they will hire me. And uh, I realized that uh, if I will work on all my ideas using standard 3ds Max uh, capabilities, it will take months. So I asked, I wrote to the Blue Studio, I asked them to give me their script because it was in-house uh, software. They didn't share it anywhere. Well, and they obviously said that, we, sorry, man, we can't do this. It's our tool. We're not sharing it. So this is the moment when I decided to try to uh, to program something like this by myself and I didn't have any kind of programming experience back then only visual effects so that was a uh, motivation for me to start learning programming and wow. I kind of it took about a month to write script which actually did exactly the same what they script did and after another month it was much better than their version so I wrote them email and said that, uh, so you didn't give me your uh, <laughs> script, so I had to write my own. And if you want to use it, you can use it. <laughs> I mean, no problem with that. And after that moment, we kind of had a kind of good relationship with um, a few people from Blur Studio. And so they they followed uh, development of plugin and they used it. As you can see, there's a lot of shots with uh, Blur caption yeah so they used it a lot actually i provide them and then they never bought uh a license i always uh, provide it to them for free so that was maybe another <laughs> reason for them to use it oh but you see, so, see, you see you, you, there's two there's two things i take from this story right is is you wanted to get a job there yeah right 
Okay, I'm just going to pull Star Fader for a second. So you want to get a job there, and... And I got it, after all, just so you know, it's not finished story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, gave, you gave them away, the stuff for free, and now you... So is that basically... Are you, is that how you get in? Or because or, because or, I'm always worried that you're basically you're going to say you you gave them the 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 the, the code for free you they, they never bought a license and then they said to themselves one day you know what let's not bother giving Vadim a job he's just going to make Rayfire <laughs> and give it to us for free anyway and we don't need to pay him for it. Well, he, here the thing uh, is they actually offered me a job uh, and I worked for I freelanced for them a couple of times. And they actually wanted to hire me, but they wanted to hire me. This is the fun, fun part. I mean, I work. I started to work on my own show reel, just to, to get VFX job at Blur. And because of this reel, I had to write my own plugin. <laughs> and this plugin development gone too far, so they actually <laughs> decided to hire me as a programmer. <laughs> and I didn't want back then. I didn't want to work as a programmer, so I refused. Oh no! Also. Well, not not because I didn't want to work. Uh, I mean, how to say? Uh, back then, I already uh, felt this freedom, this feeling of uh, like you can do whatever you want, developing in any direction you want. So I didn't want to get a full-time job. So the kind of evolvement uh, which I go through from the moment when I w wanted to get a full-time job. And then I realized that I don't want to get full time job because I want to stay free, kind of, and belong to myself. I don't know how to, to say that's right, but, you, but I mean, I didn't even work even for Blur back then when they offered me a job. That's crazy. Well, yeah, that's kind of <laughs> sounds weird, but <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with it, my it, choice. It, it, it. You, it took you on the path. So you wanted to get a job with these people and you went down a path to get there. The journey on that path taught you that actually it was the, it was the journey that was what was fun, not the destination. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You actually you said it perfectly. I mean, it was much better and much interesting, much more interesting for me than actually getting a job. Wow. I know there's Blizzard as well. So yeah, uh, Blizzard also used. Oh Actually, there's a lot of company both. I mean, uh, there's a very long list. Too much time. A lot of company used it. I mean, basically, I guess uh, like ninety percent of studios who used 3ds Max in their production. This this kind of was uh, how to say default simple plugin for creating these distractions. There were bigger plugins like Thinking Particles, uh, but uh, it's much more complicated and you have to set up your uh, scene like for hours. Uh, it will be much better, but uh, in case you want, in case you had, you wanted to create something simple, like just, just drop something and demolish it, you could do this with Ray Fire like in a minute without creating a huge setup with all nodes connected with each other, I mean, this kind of stuff. Now, let me ask you a sensitive question. Okay. Is, is there an enterprise model that when these companies are buying your plugin, that they're paying you every month or like a, a, a yearly subscription or, or an enterprise fee? for a, Or are they just buying the plugin once and that's it? And if you do an update, then mm -hmm. they buy that? They yeah yeah they the license they buy it's lifetime license so it's belong to them for lifetime it also provides one year of uh, support and maintenance and all releases for free and uh, after that uh, it is possible to buy upgrade if you want it's not I'm not forcing anyone and if you want you can buy upgrade to get another year of support and maintenance well this is how it worked for to specs. With the Unity, it works in a different way. So I would, there's, a, there's a few publishers out there um, on the asset stores uh, and on, on other sh stores as well, where they're going, okay, if you're earning above, if your company earns above, you know, like... No, 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 I'm not doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, but for Dean, normally I would be like, you know, don't, you know, charging the little man. 
But these these people, I'm looking at your show wheel, and of you know you've got AAA studios, movie studios, game studios, uh, v, VFX studios, using your stuff. Uh, they've got enough money, Vadim. They've they don't mind giving you more. Charge <laughs> them. Charge them loads. Well, you know, uh, actually, uh, I don't know. I didn't actually always. Uh, not not doing this only because of money. I mean, now maybe I have family and I have to support, and I'm thinking about combining this, my doing my what I like and making money. But Money's back nice. then I was Money's yeah. Nice. Back then, <laughs> back then, back then I was young. I was, I mean, I didn't care about uh, much about money. That was a good money, so I didn't care about uh, making even more. So I just just uh, did what i like and also there's a thing that uh, you know uh but when i when i started to learn this max uh it was like how many 20 years ago or something like this uh it was it was no way to buy it i mean i was a student and it was like i don't know what was very expensive i mean expensive incredible expensive amount of money it wasn't it possible to buy. So I just, well, obviously, I just uh, uh, used cracked version. Well, you're Russian, obviously, you know, it's good for us. Like. <laughs> well, back then, it wasn't, there wasn't even a way to buy a licensed version. I mean, there wasn't representative distributors, you know, with, just with their local prices. Yeah, I've got, I've, got, yeah. I've got a friend, I've got many friends in Russia. They used to tell me that. In, in Russia, they would be um, like fake distributors of known brands who would set themselves up selling, you know, like bootlegged things as though they were legit because there, there was no, there's no other way of in movies, uh, like washing machines. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was Wild West. There, there was um, 20 years ago, it was kind of like a Wild West in this in these terms. You just could buy any software on the disk uh, on the market. So this is what I did. I buy a buff disk with 3D packages, and there was 3ds Max and Maya. And uh, 3ds Max was cracked in a couple of seconds. You just had to put your serial ID, and that's all. And Maya was there has all this licensing system. You had to do a lot of steps. So uh, basically, at this moment, I decided to start learn 3ds Max. <laughs> and well, yeah. And then when I uh, kind of started to uh, sell my software, I wasn't that uh, greedy, and I didn't have any kind of protection uh, because it was kind of my way to get back to community. Something like I understood that uh, just like me, other people also may not afford to buy my software, so I kind of didn't have any kind of protection and. I also didn't try to charge for a lot of money and squeeze this extra bucks from companies. Kind of, I don't know, maybe this sounds stupid, but that was my kind of contribution. To well, no, because there's, 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 there's a whole industry, the open source, you know, there's people out there that are, and I keep getting told off in chat, like, you know, because I'm not really, I'm not sure, I don't understand how you can make money in an open source model. Um, and if anyone's in, in chat, you know, you know who you are, chat people, that are basically saying, you can give your things away for free and still earn money in other ways. Like, yeah, yeah. Someone who actually want to support development, uh, these people will buy. So everyone will be happy after all. I'm looking at this bunny rabbit. I just want, I want to rewind this bunny rabbit video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can ask any questions while you see this promos. This is a voxels modifier. It feels okay, volume the, of. The first question is: Is this witchcraft? <laughs> uh, that's the well, first al one. almost, almost. And it, so, is the, is this bunny rabbit in? Is this uh, it's also inside three D Studio Max, or is this? Inside. This is a free model. This is a free model. You can download it. It's kind of there is a place with a bunch of free 3D models, which you can use. Could we do this bunny rabbit in Unity? This is what we're saying. No, here. no, no, no. This is a voxels modifier. I, we didn't move anything like this in Unity yet. 
Oh, yet. So is this like a possibility that this could... There is, there is, of course, there is, but uh, only when we will finish with all the fragmentation stuff and I will decide that it's enough for Unity, then we can start playing around for like like this modifier was uh, it wasn't it wasn't about demolition right so when we worked on this it was kind of making something funny and useful at the same time so if, how many how much percent would you say the functionality of uh ray fire for 3d studio max has been copied over to unity mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe thirty percent. I guess. Wow! So there's a there's still seventy percent worth of features that that can be on their way. From... Well, well, yeah, but the best features we already moved. I mean, we started from the the main core features well, like don't, fragmentation. Don't, don't say the best features. <laughs> You're supposed to say the best is yet to come, and that well, makes actually, people actually, excited. Well, actually, actually, Unity already have uh, Unity already has a feature which 3ds Max doesn't have yet because. Uh, when we started to work on Unity, uh, development for Fidus Max was paused, and we actually created some uh, features for Unity, which we are going to uh, port to the 3ds Max plugin. So in some kind of Unity plugin already uh, better than 3ds Max. Oh, so the, so when you say that there's 30 percent of what you have on 3D Studio Max ported over to Unity, but then Unity's got some additional extra stuff that 3D Studio Max version doesn't have yet. Yeah, yeah. We actually are going to update 3ds Max plugin soon and move some Unity features to 3ds Max. Wow. And then you've got all of the other uh, 3D engines that that are out there. So which so is there going to be an what about Unreal and uh, so is, is Rayfire on Unreal as well? Or is it just Unity and 3D Studio Max? Uh, well, actually, we have a library of this fragmentation library, and it was written in the way so it will be possible to use it to any platform. So it's just a matter of creating this uh, con connectors kind of the the little libraries which will just kind of translate, uh, uh, like there's a Unity mesh and there's our own mesh in our library. So all we have to do is just convert this Unity mesh into our mesh and then do all fragmentations. And if we will decide to write this plugin to Unreal, all we need to do is just this, write this small part which will convert Unity, uh, I mean, convert Unreal mesh into our mesh and then all the fragments back to the Unreal. So it's not it's not it won't take too much time. It's just a matter of resources and well, time. Wow. Well, so uh, let me let me give you a, a bit of advice. Okay. Epic like throwing money away. Yeah, right? I know what you're saying. Ep Epic, this, is, this is my plan. <laughs> yeah. So get get that Epic grant. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is exactly what but I want. But don't to do. tell them how easy it is. To get it well, working, because right? well, you know, because <laughs> you've just told everyone, right? And, and I'll, oh, don't worry, I will edit it out. Is that so? That never happened. Nobody well, knows. I'm, I, it's not easy, actually. <laughs> uh, they, I think, these people understand uh, even better than me how how hard it is and not easy. Because the, the hardest part is not to create these connectors, which will just make all this convertation, but to create this per, per pipeline of usage, I mean interface which features, how they uh, work with each other. This is the hardest part. If you just create a kind of code which can fragment object, not be much useful. Uh, I mean, the most, the hardest part is to um, kind of exp uh, kind of create feature, not the technology. I mean, there you go, you saved it. You saved, you saved your grant money, well done. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully <laughs> they heard this as well. <laughs> but yeah, you're actually right. I was going to do this, but first I want to finish with the most important features with Unity because otherwise uh, there will, uh, then won't be time for this if we will decide to spend time for Unreal Engine. Obviously, there will be several months um, which we'll have to work only for Unreal. 
and uh, I want Unity version to be finished by this moment. Now you know um, Unity like pushing their uh, that basically the enterprise use of Unity to say that uh, movie studios are able to use Unity to make movies, and they they had Disney was using Unity for uh, prototyping. I think there was a Jungle Book movie. Um, that they were doing now we all know that unreal is ridiculously powerful and beautiful and the mandalorian uh yeah. and other stuff is actually done in the production is done in, in unreal not not just the prototyping like it's unity but yeah, it can it can make amazingly beautiful things and in 3d studio max we were looking at your videos in the show reel of uh like what blur did and what blizzard's done uh, and the pre-rendered, but would you ever be able to do that quality in in real time with uh, an engine? Maybe not. I don't want to be too mean to Unity. Maybe you know, with HDRPs, you know, even better. But let let's pretend that you've got it working with Unreal Five. You know, like you know, this is the future now. Unreal Five. Do you think that you could do real time cinematic? explosions with ray fire in a game engine with a well, high I, fps i think it will be possible to do in unity with new this, this um uni physics e ecs system Ooh. i just didn't uh didn't make any research and development yet because uh i guess it's not maybe it's not uh the good the best time to art support it's not it's, <laughs> when it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's developing i mean it's developing they are working uh, hard on this but uh last time i checked it's still uh kind of you know it's for the most of users uh, you need to spend a lot of time to make it work so uh, i decided it's better for me for now to concentrate on other features and then to, it won't take too much time to art support for ecs <laughs> So what about skinned mesh? And and with, with this ECS uh, system, it will be totally possible to create a cinematic mm. uh, quality. There you go. Well, I was I was being tactful with Unity, but you went straight in and said, "Yes, it is a possibility, even with Unity." So that and awesome. and in Unreal, of course, in Unreal Engine as well. Oh, of course, you could do anything in Unreal. Unreal's the Unreal's amazing, <laughs> most amazing thing in the universe. Everyone knows that. Um, <laughs> Now I've got a question in chat. The game is saying I don't think it works for skinned mesh renderers yet, and that's what they've been wanting to use it on. Um, can... This is we are working right now. Like, there you go. Like, yeah, like but today. It was, it's it. We I thought it will be easier. So I I didn't thought it will be easy. I just thought it will be easier, but it turned out there is much more complicated, you know, unexpected problems we faced. So it take more time. Can you can you tell us what some of those problems were? Uh, the problem was with uh, you know uh, there is uh, bone weights on the vertices mm -hmm. on skinned mesh. So uh, when we fragment our object, uh, we have to uh, kind of move all this information through the fragmentation process. And uh, since we didn't expect this anything like this uh, when we wrote our main library. Uh, now we have to kind of squeeze all this additional code into my library and uh, it wasn't designed for something like this so we have to kind of spend extra time to changing the core code and uh, this start mm, drag and other problems like you change something and uh, it makes something else doesn't work as expected so we have to uh, have to be sure that uh, everything still works as expected. Test everything, so it, it just takes longer than I expected. As but upon, we are one, working. Once people start using it, you you can't just put in a new feature because if it if, if it breaks, uh, you go well. They're using it now. It was just broken it all. So before before you went live and you were selling it on the marketplace. I, you you had a bit more freedom to just go crazy with features. Uh, regression testing is not really so important now that people are trying to use Rayfire in their games. 
it's very important that your new the new release of Rayfire that hasn't changed drastically, and people then have to rewrite all of their integration that they've done and their projects. Well, this is one of the reasons why I'm not uh, kind of promoting Skinned Mesh fragmentation because uh, I'm not sure how this will work when we actually will finish with this library changes. How many of you are there? Because it, is it the royal like? No, no just two of us. There was another guy. There was a three of us. Now it's just two. But it's not about. I mean, I can. I guess I can uh, hire someone else. But it will take like half of the year for someone just to get into this whole this demolition fragmentation all this softwares because the co the programmer just he, he have to. No, obviously have to program in the in a, I don't know Visual Studio, but he also should know this Unity or 3ds Max, and this is pretty huge software just to learn it in a month. So this is this is hard to find someone who will be good enough programmer and at the same time will be a good enough game developer. I've got an idea. Hire him and don't pay him for the first six weeks. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> that might work as a as an intern. No, uh, that won't we, work. For I'm sure. just looking at chat. Facebook. Does anyone read this? Yes, we do read this. Uh, just a bit late. Uh, would Rayfire work for Go? Or would Rayfire for Godo or Godot, however you pronounce it, uh, be harder than Rayfire for Unreal? Have you looked at the Godot engine? Mm, nope. This is something I didn't didn't watch yet at all. I mean, I have zero experience with Godot. What about maybe um, maybe actually I should spend some time. You should, maybe. but only after you've put skin meshes working in Unity. Um, what about CryEngine or Lumberyard? No, we actually. I I think I'm not. That, let me get back to two years ago just to explain what, what was my plan uh, and actually it's still it is so we spent like a year to write this uh, fragmentation library so it will be independent of platform and it will be possible to use it for every platform so this is why actually we wrote it this way so it will be possible to port this system to wherever you want and uh, Unity, I decided to pick Unity as the first platform to show this technology, how it works, and kind of to fine tune all these features. Because uh, if you will see the first build of Unity plugin, it was something completely different than, you see, than what you see now. We added a lot of new stuff. And uh, so what I wanted to do is to use Unity as a, the basic kind of showcase, maybe. So other maybe companies will see what they can get, maybe CryEngine, uh, any other, I mean, so they will contact by themselves with me and uh, some offer me some... Lots of money. Well, obviously, it, <laughs> it, it, it will be money. But again, again, I just want to, you know, uh, when you create some technology, you want it to be used as much as possible and... Uh, for now, it kind of restricted only to 3ds Max and Unity, but it could be used basically to any uh, engine. So uh, why not to create? Why not to port it? But uh, this uh, this has to be done by someone, and uh, it has to be paid by someone. So it's I mean it's it's in the future. I don't think Unity will be the last platform. For this plugin, I would uh, love to see this in. I, I, uh, hey, first of all, it's it's amazing that this is in Unity first, you know, because everyone's excited. Uh, and let's be honest, it's the biggest marketplace for for. A, yep. Yep. Well, this is why I chose chose uh, Unity because you're a very clever man, very clever. Oh, possibly. Uh, and um, if you looked at the subtitles in the reel, one of them asked if anyone was reading them. It made me chuckle. Oh. I get you now, face biter. Very clever, very clever. Um, so, I would like to see this in Unreal because of 
all of the uh, cinematic and TV applications in it and all these massive games that are being made in Unreal um, and to be able to have this you know, effect in those games would be awesome. I love it in Unity because it means that I can make a game using this and it looks like I'm a very expensive studio and actually I'm a little fat man in his bedroom uh, making it. So it's it, it it's incredible that even to to contemplate having this. Now, I've played with other assets that are that pretend to be similar. I won't say any names because it's not nice, but um, they're not the same. They're not the same. Um, this really is because other people are like you need to you need to first load up the mesh in Blender uh, and then make LODs of of everything and then you know break it down in Blender into little pieces, load it up as LODs, put scripts on it so when you hit it, it will then load the other uh, prefab and pretend that it's broken up into little pieces. But with Rayfire, correct me if I'm wrong, I, think, I can put a 3D bust of my face, if I had one, inside Unity and blow and slice off my nose. Well, yes, there is a slice feature, but it's a kind of infinite plane slice. So like the uh, the Sphinx? Well, yeah, yeah, you can. But yeah, just so you know, this infinite slice, I mean, if your nose is long enough, you can slice only nose. But if there is something else like, I don't know, I don't know, like hairs or then they also will be sliced. This is not just a small slice of area. It's kind of infinite. It's, it's like it's like a laser beam that's going on forever. Yeah. So if, so you wouldn't would you you wouldn't use that for a katana sword then slicing an apple in half because you end up chopping off the entire table and uh... no 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 I mean in uh, this uh, apple uh, local world. Oh mesh. cool. Oh right, brilliant. So you can you can yeah obviously say I'm only chopping off this apples, uh, and you wouldn't be able to go. I'm halfway through the apple and I'm stuck. You are yeah, slicing. Yeah, yeah, it apple. will be sliced all through the mesh. Well, I do love a cut apple. I have to say. Um, now, question: Fresh meat asking. Unreal have chaos destruction system. I have no idea what that is. How would they compare? And no, I don't know anything about it other than it's there. <laughs> so, Fresh Meat has heard of a name. The chaos well, yeah, destruction I system. knew about it. Actually, when we started to work on Unity, I remember they released uh, first a uh, demo of chaos system. What, is, like what, what is the chaos system? For, uh, this is a built-in destruction system. It also can uh, prefragment objects in editor. As far as I know, I mean, I have to warn, I'm not 100% sure uh, that whatever I will say is truth. But so f as far as, well, I mean, maybe they, maybe there was uh, some updates, which I don't know about yet. But uh, I just saw that it can prefragment objects in editor, and it can then uh, demolish, use these fragments to demolish object uh, in play mode. But uh, as far as I know, it doesn't... Uh, it cannot uh, break object in runtime, like when you start with solid mesh and it actually get sliced in runtime. So this is kind of uh, a rayfire advantage relative to chaos. Exactly. But chaos is more integrated into a whole Unreal Engine because it may it can work with their particle system. So this is, I think, this is the benefit of chaos. Oh, you asked. You asked. You basically. You answered something which I was going to touch on. Um, before I do touch on it, it leads me to a question, a lovely question in chat. Um, are there any? Um, if we if we ignore skinned meshes right now, well, we, we've already touched on that one. Are there any other types of meshes that Rayfire wouldn't be suitable for, or would have a problem with? So, is there? Um, and the, and the question they specifically said is like Cinti Studios faceted 
polygon style. Uh, well, yeah, I have a lot of complaints about the uh, problem with Cinti Studios uh, models, but there's kind of not a Cinti Studios fault. They create models for static usage. And uh, if you want to demolish some object, uh, you actually have to obey some rules when you're modeling it. There is a, should not be open edges and all vertices should be uh, welded together. So, I mean, if you want to uh, fragment the object and get volume, volume fragments with volume, you obviously, your uh, object, original object, also should have closed volume. I mean, you don't have in real world object with kind of, you know, that's hollow, uh, this, uh, this absence of triangles or polygons at the bottom, you know, like game models has. Yeah, so it's basically you, you you can't use ray fire on a wall that only has one sided mesh. On the uh, well, yeah, like imagine this wall, and uh, you obviously, if you plan that it will be just a static wall, you don't have this bottom polygon, right? Because yeah, because you're saving invisible. you're exactly you're saving yeah. the, the the memory. So you're like, why why would I show why why would I have the other side That's... of this wall if it's never going to be used? It's just wasting memory in my game. Right, and when you when then you when you frag, want to fragment this wall, I mean, how how it can? Uh, I mean, there is a we we have several. Uh, out of fixes, which will cre create this uh, polygon, which you didn't create. Uh, there, there are such features in our plugin. I mean, it can fix some little issues, but in some cases, people try to fragment like whole buildings, and there are like a lot of open edges. I mean, which simply impossible to close all of them in the right way, and with such complex meshes, with a lot of uh, this kind of issues, uh, it will start complaining. Also, there's a also uh, there's a two uh, modes in the Refire plugin. The first one uh, is runtime fragmentation, and this one is the most uh, kind of sensitive. Mm. Uh, if it see that there is open volume, it just uh, just doesn't fragment object in runtime uh, because because uh, it thinks you're crazy. Uh, what are you doing? It you no know, it it can it can fragment. We actually uh, made this on purpose to avoid fragmenting such fragments because it still can fragment object even if it has no uh, uh, even if it has open edges but uh, in this case you will get some fragments there also will have open edges yeah, exactly and people will play your game and go this this is broken because look at this well this not only missing. not only for this reason but because in very rare case like one to ten thousand of fragments when you try to simulate, when actually not you, but Unity, when it tried to simulate such object, it was it was crashing. Well, so you basically, it would cause Unity to explode. It would actually fragment Unity itself. Well, yeah, I, we got actually crashes because you get a bunch of fragments, and some of them fragments near this uh, area of issues like you have this open like get let, let's get back to this wall right it, it has no this at the bottom doesn't have this uh necessary triangle or face so you get a bunch of fragments and fragments at the bottom they also won't have this uh toward uh, face at the bottom so it will uh have this weird mesh and then unity physics try to create colliders for this uh weird mesh with weird topology and it fails and in some cases it even crashed unity and obviously i couldn't let this happen in game right <laughs> this is the worst what I think can happen you would have more complaints about it that crashing than you would have of it not working not being allowed yeah. to <laughs> yeah. yeah so we didn't have another option just to kind of detect uh, such issues and just uh, forbid to fragment such objects in uh, runtime, but only in runtime because there is a second mode. It's called edit remote. So this is the mode which can fragment this kind of object that will just give give you whatever it will create. But in this case, you obviously can test this object. I mean, it's enough just to simulate once this fragments and, uh, to see if it's okay, and then you can use them. But in runtime, you can get 
we can, I, I mean, I can allow you to get these weird fragments which may cause crash. Do, but the, do you know what you reminded me of then? You reminded me of uh, me as a dad listening to my six-year-old or five-year-old uh, as he wants to play with the kitchen knife. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? I can let you play with a kitchen knife. It's fine. But I know that if I let you play with a kitchen knife and you stab yourself or me, <laughs> I will be in a lot of trouble from yeah. your mummy. Yeah. Um, but if I don't let you play with a kitchen knife, you will cry and you will have a tantrum, but it won't be as bad as what exactly. your mum would do to me if you exactly. stabbed yourself. <laughs> so, so so you are the the good parent when it comes to unity asset development i have to say you're protecting all of those unity users at home from stabbing themselves with a kitchen knife play with the kitchen knife while watching the walking dead yeah i'm parent of the year i have to say i am parent of the year <laughs> now um if like i i'm i want to do i want to use cinti studio stuff with Wayfire, okay? I want to play with the kitchen knife. Ready? So what I need to do first is open up Blender or something and fix my models, uh, weld oh, yeah. those verts, and then make make it as a, as a, have a volume and not an open uh, it, it, geometry model, as, as, as everyone's saying. And then I can, if I, if I make it a big lump, then I can chop it. Well, you see, uh, I just need to add a little bit. There's a. It's not only. Um, I mean, there are there are features. Uh, there are uh, fixes, as, as I said before, like auto capping. So uh, I see there's a comment like. Uh, let me find it. I wonder if I used to refer. No, no, no. Ah, so basically, no open geometry models. I mean, no, it's not right because you can you can't use open geometry models, but if this open area is simple, I mean, it will be just uh, like this wall with just no uh, with absence of one face. It can close this wall, so that's kind of wall. But if you have like some weird topology with curved curved uh, open edges, then it will try to close this uh, open edges as well. But obviously, there will be interpenetrations. I mean, I'm getting too technical right now. And no, technical is good. We like technical. It, I mean, well, it may be hard to explain this uh, just uh, using my <laughs> English. But I if told you, you have... sp speak Russian whenever you need. It's <laughs> and then no one uh, understand <laughs> me. I guess. Well, the thing is, you can. There, there are features to fix this, but they work only for simple fixes. And the problem is that in some cases you actually uh, need to have open edges. Like uh, there might be some plane, plane with texture with alpha channel, right? And you actually need to keep this uh, plane actually as a plane. You don't need to close it. So it can slice objects with open edges. But in this case, all uh, meshes with open edges, they will be just, uh, it will be cuts. There won't be volume fragments. And the meshes with volume fragments, they will generate uh, fragments with volume. This is hard to understand, that, right? <laughs> I, I, I think I understand it. I, but do you know what? I, I hear, I hear a lot so of talk. So the, the idea is that if you want to, <laughs> the, let me let me explain this way. If you want to uh, fragment complex mesh, and I guess Synthesis Studios, they this is the kind of mesh they have. It is better to separate your meshes into kind of logically. Like walls should be separated from the floor, and door should be separated from the walls. You know, because okay. usually this is just one mesh. I, I would have thought that would have been generally the rule of thumb. If you're going to be chopping something up or blowing it up, modular buildings. Yeah, first of all, you need to separate different modules, and then it's much easier to uh, work with every module. Then you just try to cap as much open edges as possible. And you should avoid this uh, open edges, uh, which is okay for static geometry, but for objects which you want to demolish and then stimulate, there should be it should be closed volume. There should not be open edges, and then you need to select all vertices and weld them, 
And again, the reason why you should uh, separate all these elements to models is because um, uh, Unity Mesh is it's pretty simple. It has pretty simple structure. So uh, when um, let me let me think about better how to explain this. It has all triangles or has its own vertex. In 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 3ds Max, you can have like uh, like one mesh. I mean, if I will start explain, even I won't won't understand. <laughs> But from what I remember, from my days of mucking about with, with, with the, the, the long story about. short, I mean, just just let me explain the core. What idea is that Unity Mesh is very simple and it doesn't allow allow to convert it to our mesh. Yeah. Uh, in you, the right way. You can't. You can't be going. You know, I've got my mesh. It's going to be uh, quads, or it's going to be. What yeah. Is it? Our yeah. mesh is support kind of. It's more advanced than Unity Mesh, so we have to take something. Uh, simple, and they try to convert to our version, which can can have, can handle something more complicated. And because of this uh, Unity Mesh restrictions, in some cases, if you have, let's say, you have one box, and on top of that box you have another box, right? So they uh, touching each other, they yeah. were just connected. Uh, the problem is that when you convert this kind of mesh to our mesh. It it can it doesn't know that there are two cubes because in Unity uh, this is just a bunch of triangles. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't know that this shared area of two boxes of two cubes, you know, this uh, middle area, it has faces from one cube, the bottom face of one cube, and the top face from another cube, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, when you convert this to our engine, it doesn't know where this face belongs to bottom cube or the top cube because for in Unity just a bunch of triangles. I understand. Well, it's kind of very simplified version, but yeah. So it may fail uh, understanding which volume it should fragment. So after all, it will get all this mess, and uh, well, then you may start getting some fragments, weird fragments. And uh, well, this is another one problem you may have fragmenting Synthesis Studios objects because I noticed that they they have something like this, like L2 elements of different objects. They kind of stay cl too close to, to, to together. And uh, they're on the stream tomorrow. They're coming on the show tomorrow well, for an interview. So, well, you can you can you can tell them that. <laughs> so you can you can come into the the chat and type away to them, and but, say, but, "Oh, and, and, this and, this is not Cindy Studios kind of uh, problem. It no, is you a say, common say, problem say, of three Say, say, say some, uh, don't, wouldn't you like to blow things up? Here you, you start welding your your you start welding yourself together, <laughs> and then you can be blown up into into millions of pieces. Well, uh, here's the thing: if you don't, know, if you are not going to blow off your uh, models, then you don't have to do all this. Uh, all you don't need to obey all these rules because, in this case, you will end up with model with a bunch of unnecessary, unneeded uh, faces which you don't need, right? So this is the you have to kind of choose. If you want to demolish object, then you make sure its model is. Appropriate and good enough for oh, demolition. Now, now you just make me want to go through all of my collection of models and see which ones I can blow up and which ones I can't blow up. Like it's it's like I had planned to do constructive things tomorrow during the daytime, and instead I'm going to be loading random <laughs> things into Rayfire and seeing if they blow up correctly or not. Thank you for dis totally disrupting my day. Thank you. You, you've, you've, I'm going to say you've ruined my day because I would have been constructive. But oh no, I'm going to be blowing things up. Can we blow things up together? I'm going to stop watching videos for a second uh, and I'm going to jump inside Unity uh, uh, and then we can start blowing things up. Um, as, as chat takes, takes a moment to absorb and Fresh Meat says, my tanks want me to get back to them and give them stuff to break now it's scary when he says that Vidim, because he's actually in the canadian military and he was driving uh, working on tanks 
So I don't know if he means his real tank in Canada to go and, and blow <laughs> things up, or does he mean virtual tanks in Unity? Now he asks, how scalable is Rayfire? Like, how crazy can we get? Brilliant question. Can we fill up the room, a scene with hundreds of objects to blow up? And does it matter the size of the object versus the, the quantity? Like, if I had uh, a thousand small cubes or 50 complex images or meshes, would would they be equally the same thing or is or how, how does it work uh well actually it wasn't designed for this massive i mean the first build wasn't designed for this massive simulations and demolitions <laughs> and this is also another thing i'm working on right now on I'm working on new component for actually creating massive simulations because uh first uh, build which i worked on it was Designed it for kind of local small demolitions of objects in runtime, and it has a lot of uh, core routines and other methods like collision checks. Uh, uh, it's okay if you have like 10, maybe 100 of such objects, but if you have 10, like I mean, thousand of cubes, uh, and every cube, every moment check for collision, and if and when it collides, it starts checking all this collision strength parameters and well then it can get uh, slower but uh, this is something uh, people started to complain recently because uh, just with just like with the, uh, everything when you get something you start pushing it to the limits <laughs> and obviously you want, you want everything to blow up Basically, yeah obviously you, you, you want to make an some... mmo but you want to you want to make the, uh, an, an endless open world mmo where every single thing can be destroyed in, with ray fire. Uh, that's what people that when they buy it, they go, "I've got ten thousand meshes in my scene, and all of them can be destructible with ray fire." So, well, it, yeah, this is you. You can you can actually you can do this, but uh, you just need to do this in more sophisticated way. I mean, obviously, you don't have to put all this ten thousand of objects uh, in your scene and then just start uh, simulation. <clears throat> But if you will kind of it's hide and activate, I want to <laughs> see. I understand, like you know, when you do a trigger, obviously, when something is triggered, then uh, then then it, then it will start simulating the ray fire and convert it over. So you would wait until I don't know. You're you either you know you hit it or you're within the radius of it or something. But um, I can. You you were talking earlier about the possibilities of ECS and dots. And yep, yep. Fresh, this, fresh is, this is new component which I'm working on. It doesn't use ECS, but uh, it was right now. I mean, uh, just to explain, uh, I actually I have an image just to show you to compare, but it will take some time to find it. Well, the thing is, it's twice faster than current uh, uh, workflow. Like if you have seven uh, thousand of fragments and every fragment has its own rigid component which handles its simulation. Now I'm working on a component which is you attach to the root and then it manages all uh, its children's simulation. And in this way, it works twice faster. Already it works twice faster. And this component is which will, mm, it, it will utilize this ECS system. So first I want to finish it. Like, so it will work uh, without bugs and errors using standard Unity phys physics, and then like this that. is a component which will start using ECS. Because uh, I don't want to add ECS support to this current simple uh, rigid component, because it will make it even more advanced and even more harder to understand. And it, it even for now, it's already kind of overloaded with all this user uh, interface. All, all, people already start complaining about how People, people are always complain. Ignore them. Well, yeah, Ignore. I, I, I get used. Exactly. <laughs> for, I, for, for 15 years, I get used to this. <laughs> Don't worry. <clears throat> I know there oh. always will be some, someone won't be happy enough. But uh, just, I decided that, 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 that question I, it's better to leave away. this rigid component as, as is. So it will be used for simple local demolitions. 
and for these massive simulations and demolitions, there will be completely separate component which will will be designed exactly for this kind of tasks. Mate, I, I just tried to import in, uh, not a Cinti Studio, somebody else, but it says I needed to be using Unity 2019 to import it. So that wasn't very nice of them at all. How mean is that? Um, now, um, well, what are chat saying? Wouldn't it be funny if EA uses Rayfire for full environment destruction in the next battlefield? Now, they obviously have got their own engine, but like Vadim is saying, that it's uh, done in such a way that it's engine agnostic to hook into the libraries of Rayfire. So if, if EA came knocking and said, you know what, we would like to add Rayfire into our custom, our own uh, in-house game engine, then they'd be like, yeah, sure, give me a load of money, and and there you go. Or would you go? Or would you allow people to build it themselves? Uh, build themselves? What exactly? Integration <coughs> of their own custom. If like if EA with their own custom game engine wanted to integrate their own engine in with Rayfire's library, would they be able to do it themselves, or would they would they need to go to you for mm -hmm. the? Uh... Why not? I mean, this is this is something we can talk. And, I'll, uh, I'll hook you up with them later after the. <laughs> well, this is about uh, making a deal. I mean, if they want to just license this library and do whatever they want with this library, well, it's okay. If they want us to write plugin, it's also fine. I mean, this is depends on what they actually want to get and how they want to be involved in the development. I would love to see. I mean, you know what? I would. I would love to see more games using Rayfire. But then, do you know what the greedy part of me says? I don't want them using it because I want to use it and I want to be the only one. <laughs> so, so I don't know what to say. Now, I'm, I'm sharing you my screen with you. Do you reckon? I'm not, everyone at home can't see what you can see. This this asset that I'm showing you now is modular. Apparently, uh, should we should we try try importing this in and, and start? And you can show me how I can blow something up. Well, let's try. Let's try it. It's a it's Velkin Labs. Um, I'm not a massive fan of Velkin Labs, but uh, I tried importing in a free asset and um, and, it, and it wasn't compatible with the version of Unity I'm using, so I've sod it. Now. Uh, People asking the what, what in the past like, what what is it about um, asset publishers that make me like them or not like them? And the first thing that I say is that if an asset publisher replies to an email in a timely manner, that's the first tick in the box. Because but when I when I review an asset and do a proper review like the ones where I actually give scores and whatnot, I if it's an art asset. They would be like reviewed on um, the 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 textures. You know, if it was if it was a model, so they would, the textures and the meshes would be th things that they're scored on separately. Um, value for money, they'll be scored on separately. And customer support. Now, the customer support means how often they are um, maintaining. Like, do they do they up do updates and things? So maybe if it's an art package. It, they tend to leave it alone. Like some people would keep on adding, like Aquarius Max does, because he's insane. He would release an asset with 500 prefabs, and then he keeps on adding to it. And by the time you buy it, it's got 10,000 prefabs in it because he's insane. Um, but also, support means answering the, the, a question in a timely manner. And what's considered a timely manner? Asks Stanley. Now, this is a question that I've asked in the Discord. Generation Mark Discord. And for Dean, we've gone past a thousand members on our Discord community now. We're, we're growing uh, slightly. Congrats. Thank you so much. And tomorrow we'll be giving away uh, presents thanks to Forge 3D. And also, today we're giving away a copy of Rayfire. Thanks to the beautiful Vadim from Rayfire Studios. And I would say, normally, uh, a week. You know what? If I send an email, I would expect a reply in let's say five to seven working days 
Now that's too much for me. See, see, there you, now I would say because of COVID, I would even be more generous and say, you know what, I would like a reply within two weeks. Um, if, uh, if I get a reply within two days, I'm happy. If I wait uh, a week now, I would be really upset. Microphone problems or importing into Unity? Oh, are we getting problems on the stream? Because yes, I am importing into Unity. I wasn't expecting there to be microphone problems though, because uh, I'm streaming from the other PC. So that's bizarre. How's the mic? How's oh, good now. Okay. Okay, okay you're right. Let's have one more. Thank you so much, by the way. Uh, and if you follow, uh, don't forget to link your Discord and your Twitch, uh, and if you're subscribing as well. Now, uh, two days, I'm happy. Now, Vadim, you're saying a week is too much. If, if I sent you an email with a question about Rayfire, when would you generally reply to me? Well, Mark, one day, average one day, probably maybe, if it's not instant, it may take a day, and maximum it will be two days. In case I am I was busy, I don't know, I was somewhere. What about was, your partner? Because you said this, well, your, your colleague, you say there's two of you now. Is it no, only no. Uh, you doing he's the answers? Only, uh, he's in backend. He's working on this library. He's not allowed to talk to people. It's not like he's not allowed, but he <laughs> he's not that good with uh, in Unity, and uh, so it's this kind of stuff is on me. <laughs> I, Support is uh, totally on me. I know some asset publishers who shouldn't be allowed to do their own support. Um, That's weird. <laughs> well, We've interviewed a few of them now, uh, which which leads to me to my next point: a timely manner, right? It, uh, which is important. Like if I if I send you an email asking for a random question, <coughs> give me an answer. Now the second thing: if I send you a stupid email, <laughs> right? How do you how do you handle that? Now if you handle that with the same way, it's the same, it'll be the same. Yeah, because that's the important thing is. Like, if I send you an email that basically says, now, um, Jason and Adam both uh, basically saying, if you ask me to read you out the asset store description, I won't, I won't be happy, and you'll basically get a reply that tells you to go and read it yourself, uh, effectively. Now, thankfully, um, Adam's got an, an amazing team of people now who are helping him with the support. I don't know if Brian's in chat. Is it's Night Shadow? Who uh, you said you know how Adam described it, how he handles the chat. Now Jason still does all of the support himself, but I have asked questions to other asset store publishers with him, and let's just say um, they haven't been kind to stupid questions. And if somebody's not kind to a stupid question, they're not going to get my money. Now you answer stupid questions very sweetly so i have to say because i've asked you some stupid questions in the past like uh does ray fire make things break you know uh, 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 you know, you're very you're very generous with your time i have to say and the fact that you're basically going on air and saying that you have av you're averaging like a two-day response if you have been out on the first day uh, is amazing because I mean, I got an email the other day from somebody who I'd emailed um, many times and I hadn't received a mail back in two years and, and I decided to email again and I got a reply. So sometimes I can send 50 emails and only get one response back. You, you must be, how do you do any work, first of all? Because if you're always answering questions, how do you spend your time doing anything? Right, you know, I can't, uh, can't say you any kind of like I have any schedule. Yeah, it's totally free time. I want to work. I'm working. I don't want to work. I'm not working. If I get an email, I reply. If I can reply, I well, like that. <laughs> uh, there's no any schedule. Just to to share it. It's a free fall, you know. Now I've imported in um, some artwork, okay, okay. from uh, 
Vulcan Labs. And I furniture, right? This furniture. Th this, fur I think. I think this is a furniture. Furniture. See, Vulcan Labs is 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 a Russian uh, artist, I think, as well. Now, um, I didn't realize. Obviously, I should have thought that maybe most of his stuff is just primitive shapes with nice textures on it, because um, that <laughs> that looks like it would it would cut quite well in Rayfi. But let's find something that's a little bit more complex, shall we? Let's try. I mean, look. What about this one? This look. This has got a handle on it. So let's I, try so if i look at the prefab on this but first can you can you shade it wireframe mode just to see yes it's, uh... no 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 not wireframe but shaded oh shaded wire. yes shaded wireframe where is it there we go just to just to see if it has closed volume at the bottom you want to see my bottom how dare you <laughs> well seems like it's well, I, I think you just should apply this shutter component and just click fragment. It'll be the fastest way to see if it's okay. So let so let let's do. I got a bit. Gamey says in chat, if you make a good product, then hopefully you don't spend most of your time on support. Actually, the, a good product versus a complex product. You can still be a good product, but but be complex and and difficult for people to to understand. Um, there you go. Now. What do I do? So, so I'm gonna. You should uh, add component. It's called Refire Shatter. Do I add it on the prefab or on a? No, mesh? no, no. Just, just add component. Just add component. Yeah. Refire. Shatter. Shatter. This is a component that you use. You should use for editor fragmentation. Do I need to un unpack this prefab? Uh, what? Uh, can you open it? Let's open it. I mean. Uh, just to see what's inside of this. Oh, okay. Now I see. So you see, there's a lot of small things. There's a lot of small things. Oh, well, yeah. you need to select the the biggest one, the main body. This is the main one over here. Here it is. Look at the size of him. There it is. Well, you will fragment, but it will fragment only this mesh. Can can you delete? Uh, I mean, or hide? The rest of the fragment just uh, to see the main body. There you go. Well, it looks still. But what, looks if, but what if I added the fragment shatter thingamajig on the each of these smaller things as well? Then. Well, it will, you will fragment only this. Uh, so you add component and uh, it fragments this mesh filters mesh. All right. So uh, for you, here we go. So. Okay. Now I go. Now I click this fragment button, do I? Yes, but uh, well, click fragment. Yes, but you scared me. Uh, the thing is because you're working in uh, prefab mode right now. Okay. So I sh should I should I unpack? Yeah, yeah. yeah you should uh, you should do this instead, uh, because you, you see uh, there's a uh, when you fragment your object, it creates new meshes, and uh, the only place where you store uh, you see there's a hollow table root already, so it was already fragmented. Inside scene. That will delete it right now. I shall delete it. Go away. Yeah. Let's go. So select uh, this main body again and click fragment. And now you can see there is scale preview slider on yeah. in the refire shutter. Yeah, just drag it. <gasps> oh, look at that. Just, oh, where's it all gone now? Well, just, just drag it. Yeah, like this. No. So now you can see it, it shows you these fragments. I'm going to turn off this shaded wireframe mode. Like that. And I guess you you should use some kind of some different material for inner surface because uh, this it will apply the same material for ah. inner surface. And as you can see, it will have this weird uh, texture or something. Yeah. Which should not be inside. Shouldn't though, should it? So I go into the materials then, like, don't I? Yeah, you should you should delete. You should delete on the on top uh, under the fragment button. Click yeah. on delete. Where does it say delete? Delete last. Delete last button on top on top of the shutter component. Delete last. Okay. Yes. So now you can apply some material. Yes, inner material here. Gonna go with concrete. W whatever you like. I like okay, it. Okay. Now, now click fragment again. 
Now let's do now I use my slider. Look at that. Look at that. I can change if I change do I have to change? Well, you, should, no, you need to delete, delete, delete and then delete. Do it. Okay. Yeah. Delete last. This is actually one of this the so improvement fun. uh we will add later. <gasps> no, so. you're gonna be able to I can then change it and it will automatically delete the fragment and refragment. Well yeah, you can actually click click fragment. Click fragment. And uh, now we can open slabs. You see, you, you selected the slabs uh, type. Wow. Open slabs properties. Slabs properties. Oh, here we go. Slabs yeah. properties. And you can change amount to some 100. And oh, now we can slabs. click on fragment to last, fragment to last button. On. Yeah, in this case, it'll just refragment. So now, Redim, yep. I want to uh, mash up my hollow table. Mash it up now. Now, if you, I, you mean in the runtime? I want to. I want to. I want to have both. Uh, oh, like, uh, I see. I see. Yeah. You mean this uh, top part? Yeah. Yeah. I saw the title. Is there a chance Rayfi is coming to Unreal, or is it referring to feed? It is coming to Unreal. Uh, not um, you know tomorrow, but it, yes, there is a chance Wayfire is coming to one world. Watch the VOD, and you can get the beginning of the chat. Nanako knockoff tough. <laughs> now, um, so you Vadim, managed to. I managed to. to I managed to break. <laughs> now the question is, you can hear me, and I can hear you, but can anyone else in chat hear me? Or has Unity caused my computer to freeze the microphone like it did when it was importing? And possibly, I'm going to say that turn off auto baking the light, the lighting. Uh, yes, they can hear. All is good. Brilliant. So, is this a problem because it's trying to automatically do the lighting at the same time as doing others? So, it was me being stupid, and, I, and Unity, as always, uh, has that pre-ticked? You know, this could be this reason. It could Actually, be I will need to check this. Shall I kill my? Shall I kill the uh, the application? Then? Shall I kill it? Well, you see, uh, I I think you should better send me this uh, object later just to see what's wrong with this mesh because it looks like this is just a plane, right? It does look like it's just a simple, a simple mesh. It's a simple mesh. It's so well, small. This, this is the problem. Yeah, it was trying to cut it, but at the same time, it uh, well, there's no volume. But for some reason, it. Let's do, let me kill. Just, let me kill uh, Unity. Goodbye. Twenty three megs of memory it was using. Yeah, that was a bad oh, example. Twenty three gigs of memory, rather. <laughs> I'm very using. sorry for these guys. Uh, no, no, this this is but the. This is what we're here for, to break things. Okay. Well, yeah, you see, this is when uh, you we usually do not test with, with such simple for, uh, objects. So uh, it turns out that this plain objects may have a lot of folders you have. <laughs> Don't look at all my millions of folders I have open. There you go, it's all clean now. Everything's clean. Maybe everyone on the stream gets a copy and we don't tell anyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, it was uh, the main body was fragmented, but this plane, <laughs> well, you know, this is a problem. I never tried to fragment planes. I mean, <laughs> who you've will never, fragment planes? <laughs> you've never tried. I'm all about fragmenting the planes. This is just a plane. Who yeah. will fragment the plane with two, two, two triangles like Exactly. Let's this is it. some stupid bug, I guess, let, which let, I let missed. Me, now I'm going to try it again. I'm going to turn off auto generate the lights. Okay, auto generate lights is off. Okay, we're going to do this. All right, Vadim, don't worry. I look after you. Yeah, <laughs> you with me now. There's no one else here. It's just you and I together. I can't even remember where it was. Where the heck was it? Hollow table. 
Was it the hollow table? Yes, it was the hollow table. All right, hollow table. Let's do this. Let's, let's stick it in. I'm going to stick it in. Are we going to do it? All right, it's going to be good. You forgot to select this uh, table. No, 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 I'm, doing, I'm, I'm, I'm recreating what we did. Well, bit by bit. We're doing it. So we're, we're going to recreate the world together. Do it. So I'm going to go with, again, like we had, slabs. You know what? I'm going to go with 30 because I'm, I'm, I'm not being greedy with 100. Yeah? I'm not being greedy. Changing my material. Why can nobody see what we're doing? Can nobody can see. Unity window. Maybe I, can nobody see? Stream? That's weird. Chat, can you see the Unity screen? Can anyone in chat see the Unity screen? No. Wow. It crashed. Oh my word. Not only, Vadim, not only did it crash um, Unity, OBS is now proper crashed. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Okay, chat. Uh, the stream's still gonna be running because thankfully, um, you, uh, the stream is being streamed from the streaming PC, aka my Pikey laptop. Um, but you won't hear my audio for a moment. So I'm just gonna. i Me and Vadim can still hear each other. We're gonna be saying loads of stuff about you behind your backs. Uh, all right. Don't don't blame this to, to me. Don't blame it on you. Yeah, I'll blame you. Here we go. It's back in. Can everyone see and hear? There it is. You're back. Yes, we're back. <laughs> Just don't try and blame me. Yeah, why not? Why not? Concrete interior. There you go. So fragments. There we go. Fragmented. Right. Now. Let's see. Hollow table. Can, can you wait a second? Let's wait, have a look you, at the mesh. Yeah, let, let's let's just a plane. Right. One triangle, two triangles. Yep. Sixteen verts, fourteen tries. Yep. Uh, let's hope <laughs> is, hopefully it won't take, ridiculous. <laughs> it won't take us fourteen tries to get this to work. I just, just never just expected someone to fragment plane. Let's do this. Wait a second. Before you click fragment, <laughs> open advanced properties, please. Advanced properties. Yep. Uh, can you input precap? Turn off this input precap. Turn and re remove double faces. Remove double faces. And duck decompose. I mean, and all these fixes. What, so what, what do all of these mean? What does decompose mean? Uh, decompose mean that if you have uh, on one object which has several sub meshes not connected with each other, like mm -hmm. imagine a fence, a wooden fence, right? Mm -hmm. All these planks, this is one mesh, but they are not connected to each other. Mm -hmm. If you will fragment object, let's say to three fragments, uh, it will, with, if decompose is off, you will actually get three objects and every object will have uh, several planks, right? But they will not connect with each other. So you kind of will move the subject and all these planks will move but uh, there will be a gap between them and it won't look realistic and when decompose is on it actually det detach every not connected plank into a separate object i like that that's a lovely feature <laughs> big gaming chat has been ray fire i can destroy whole buildings the plane says hold my beer <laughs> <laughs> So what does input precap <laughs> mean? Hang on, yeah, well, this, this is, this create, is the fix. Let me let yeah. me tell, let me guess. I'm gonna guess it's create extra triangles to connect open edges and close mesh volumes. Yep, exactly. But, and I guess maybe this is, was the reason because it was trying to cap this 
this plane, but at the same time, you see there's a remove double faces. Yeah. Because basically, if you cap a plane, it actually will create this double face. So. Because cap cap will be at the same plates where the actual original mesh, right? But what about this out out? You've got input precap, output precap. Output precap is when you fragment, let's say, the same wall which we talked before. If you will get these fragments, uh, they will open. If fragments will open edges, then they, these fragments will be also closed. At least it will be. It will try to close uh, if it's possible. If it won't crash, uh, your to avoid, <laughs> to avoid crashes. Yeah. Well, we try to put as much as possible this uh, fixes. But again, as you can see in this example, in some cases you may need one fix, in I, another case you may need another fix, yeah. and you can't you can't use both of them because uh, for they, different may, reasons. they may interfere with each yeah. other if you use both of them. And if you have several uh, kind of uh, models inside one mesh, uh, you may need one fixed one way, one mesh and another fix to another mesh. You can't use both of them, so this is why it's better to separate them logically. Should we try it then? I'm going to click. Yeah, let's try. Let's try again. One, oh, two, oh. three. No, no, no. It's okay. something different. Uh, so you can you can, you can, can shut down. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. it's better to shut down until it eats your memory. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. You know, you, know, you know what? We actually Eight, 20, had this 20, We got 20 gig. We got up to, Wow. Yeah. Wow, look we at it. We had this bug before. I remember we had this bug with plane before. It For some reason, it slipped again. But Sorry, the, guys. It's. Uh, but the plane had 14 bug. tries, so it should be a 3D mesh. Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's a, a plane at the top, and then it seems to be... Um, like uh, it has a, like a lip to it, but it, which is one side. Well, it's still it's now it's still not an excuse. Uh, it's not an excuse freeze, for them. <laughs> to freeze Unity, but uh, this is probably we need to test with really simple objects because it's stupid. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. This is my gift to you. <laughs> you that was a perfect uh, bug test, bug testing. I don't know how to call this. I like I like to I like Stress to test. Them, exactly. I like to remind you know, people that I actually do have some QA qualifications in my in my cupboard, and every now and again I like to remind people that when they come on this stream, they get a qualified QA engineer <laughs> breaking their stuff, and they get oh, a certificate. Why, why did you choose this model? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm testing it with objects with like hundreds, uh, with thousands of triangles, you know, all kind of. Uh, weird meshes, and you just was trying just to fragment one plane. <laughs> well, it fragments. Do you know what? Amazing. Do you know what? You are able to easily fragment the box, right? With its handle and everything, which was, you know, it was impressive. However, it seemed too impressive for me. So obviously, uh, we found something. But you know, look, here is a chair. This chair is just a chair there's nothing sinister about this chair well actually if you will uh, open its mesh can you let's have a look you see there are a lot of interpenetrations well I guess there are with all, there are all these connections chair chair connected parts well it's not like this problem but if you will try to simulate this kind of mesh uh, the fragments will probably will explode. I I, I, would, I want this to explode. Yeah, let's, let's try. This. Let's try. Come on, let's let's make it explode, buddy. This is actually when you can uh, test this decompose. Exactly, because... I was going to say because now we've got we've got a real we've got a real life scenario. It's almost Vadim like we planned it to be talking about. Yeah, yeah, okay. This advanced let's, feature. Uh, you can it? turn off it for now. So oh, look, we've got decompose. If I yep. we turn it off first. No, no. no well, you can and, then, leave, and we can uh, we can see how it works without it, and then turn it on and show how it looks with it on. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to fragment. Look, it didn't freeze. Yeah, everyone, it did not explode. Uh, here we go. Now, 
chopping up into little pieces. Okay, Let's now have a look. you can try to select. Well, here you can see this uh, bottom part, it has interfaces, and this uh, seed part, it has no. You see? Yeah. So this is what, this is what, the, what I was talking about. If uh, your, as you can see, top mesh, it has, well, this is, <clears throat> this is when you should use decompose. You see, you have this fragment, and it has several meshes. Exactly. Well, now, uh, delete, delete this fragment. So I go here, and I'm going to delete. No, no, chair. Click, click I don't on the chair. Don't I just want to go to this? Oh, no, I can go no, here no, and do delete chair, from yeah. last, can't I? Yep. I don't, I don't need to delete that by hand. I don't need now, to be dirty. Mm -hmm. Love. Now, turn on decompose. Turn on decompose. Now, what does chess say? Uh, chess? What does the chess say? What does the chat say, even? Uh, Messi broke the program. Guys, stream is over. Yes. Uh, kids, do not try this at home. Exactly. Vadim, here's my asset that was five years in the making. Messi Coda, here's your asset. I broke it in five <laughs> minutes. Uh, well, to be honest, that, uh, this bug, uh, we, we knew about this bug, and we fixed it it's, uh, in some build, in one build. I don't know why, but... I guess uh, my second guy somehow reverted back, and uh, we didn't know. Do you know what? It's it's we, like we, an, it's we, like an we, old friend. It missed you, and it came back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this happens with bugs sometimes when you fix them. <laughs> they get jealous, and they want to come some, back. Yeah, after some time, they get back somehow. You see now, if you will select this the same fragment, right. it won't be. It won't have. So. Uh, now, yeah, you see, now, now, there you it's go. So now it's now it's all by itself. Now, new yep. second question. I we've noticed that yep. obviously this one here it's single sided. It's yeah, this is also what I was saying. If your mesh has a closed volume, then it will create interfaces like at the top part. You see this. Uh, <laughs> For for the spine, but the, and but the, the, it sorry, has no. But the, sorry, I cut you off because but, uh, it just needs. It's so good. It has to be said. You said about the second guy. You know, I miss, missed this bug, and so he goes, blame it on the guy who's not allowed to talk. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this is the truth, guys. Uh, I'm working on front end on this uh, components, and another guy working on the library. Um, this is clearly <laughs> library fault. <laughs> So I will I will have a talk tomorrow with him. <laughs> what is what is worse that that, that you already faced this bug before, and it was fixed. It was working, and uh, <laughs> now you find that it returned back somehow. Okay, <laughs> you right. can deal with it. <laughs> okay, so back back to this wonderful uh, one sided mesh. Now, could I just stick on a shader, two-sided shader on my mesh and just be no, done No, no, there is no face. You see, uh, this bottom part, uh, it, it has open volume. Yeah, but if, if, I, you will, if I look if you at will it delete... from over here, like here, I can, like, yeah, I've got, I've got a bum to it. I've got, I've got an underside to it. And I've got a top to it. I just don't have anything inside it. Yep. Yes. Yes. If you if your input mesh has no closed volume, if it has open volume and open edges, then it will just cut its surface. But I was like, can't I just stick one of those shaders that it's just got, you know, to make it? Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. Two sided. A two, this. a two sided of course, shader. Of course, and cheat yes. And go. You know what? Done. It's a piece of cloth. Yeah. Yeah. In most in, in most cases, it will be enough because. In some cases, you expect expect object to be hollow, actually. So, so, so sometimes, you know, we could we could go. You know what? It, it needs to be. It, we need to know. We need to know this is a solid piece of cheese. Uh, well, the best the best way to deal with this is uh, to import this uh, mesh into Blender or TDS Max, and then fix this open edges. It will take like uh, five seconds. Now you say that close. I remember. No, it wasn't Blender, but it was a, it was a previous. Can, can you there. actually can you actually open it in Blender? Maybe I was gonna I was show. gonna say because um, uh, if if I I think I've got a, a version of Blender. Here we go. 
I do have a version of Blender. Actually, actually, you know, I can. Do you know uh, what? Fix, That's if, I can fix this in 3ds Max, maybe. Can, can you you share your screen? <clears throat> By the way, is it, everyone at home? Is Blender 2.79 the evil Blender or the good one to your? Because I look at this and this is still looking evil Blender to me. Is 2.79 the one that you're saying good evil? Good, because if, if if people are saying this is the good one. Then I'll be like, I don't understand why you're saying this is good because it still looks evil to me. All right, bye bye, evil blender. You, you may you never sully our doorstep again. Uh, it's evil until two point eight. Messi uses two point no. Messi's installed two point seven nine. Had to use it once. Stabbed himself in the eye repeatedly with a rusty screwdriver and promised not to touch it again. However, I couldn't even uninstall it because I promised not to touch it. And the only reason I broke that promise now is because Vadim sang a song to me in Russian at the beginning of the chat. And I will do anything for this man right now because I've he, he sang me so sweetly. <laughs> That's why I opened up the Evil Blender. Now, Vadim, you're going to share your screen with me on, on Teams, and I will share our Teams video to the world. So do you want me to share 3ds Max? Da. Okay, let me... Hang on, Vadim. This delicious menu? Yes, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually... It made sense to use it at that point. Okay, I'm sure. do you see my screen? Uh, I do see your screen. Oh, let me pop it out. Um, to call 2.79 evil is not nice. <laughs> but it's true. It is true. What are you talking about? Um, let me... Can you send me this mesh? I can send you that mesh. I was about to do that because it would make sense. If you were to do this mesh, you would need to have it, wouldn't you? No, well, I guess so. <laughs> Chair. Let's find chair. Chair. Okay. FBX of chair. Do you want the prefab as well? No, no, no. Only, only FBX. Only the FBX. Well, that's very nice. It's very small as well. It's 100 kilobytes. Do you want me to send you the plane that caused it to crash? <laughs> I guess I create such. But uh, maybe maybe it's a good idea to send yeah, it as well. I'll send you that. Maybe yeah. maybe it's not so simple. Actually. Exactly. Maybe that poor guy who you were going to go and 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 not give him any any water to drink for the next week. Maybe that poor guy fixed the bug. And this is a completely different bug. This is a whole new bug <coughs> that that he didn't even know about. And he's there going, why are you telling me I'd not fix bug? I fix bug, this new bug. <laughs> Your accent is great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> You're the exactly, only person. That's exactly how it sounds. <laughs> See, normally, people on stream like to like to complain about my accent. But I've, I've spent, I want to say, 20 years working with Russians. From many, I can do a St. Petersburg... Uh, Accent. I can do. Um, I can do a, a Zenit fan screaming in, in perfect Russian, and you would think that he was at a game. But you know, uh, I can. I can do a really good Israeli uh, businessman screaming at your face as well. I've been screamed at by people from many different countries. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I see. I got that. Especially when you. Do you know what? The first rule, I remember the first page of a QA uh, training manual, basically a, 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 the documentation, you know, your train, your course, coursework and how to be a QA engineer. And the first page was basically saying you need to be a diplomat, a, a spy and also um, uh, how do they word it? You, you have to be uh, everyone's best friend okay pretty much because if you go to somebody who's a developer and you go I found a bug and you think the immediate response is I don't have any bugs what are you talking about go away you know what I mean that's the I can't find the other mesh by the way um, let me let me share your screen of what you're playing with because I've sent you the mesh now it reminds me 
Did you get the mesh, by the way? I sent it to you on Teams. Uh, um, unless I sent it to the wrong person. You know, I don't see anything yet. I f cause I, that's because I dragged it into oh, the chat. Oh, okay, okay. And I, I, see, and I forgot okay. to send the sub, click the submit button. Um, now, I remember telling, and this it's just a coincidence that he's Russian. Oh. Right? oh. Uh, a Russian colleague about a particular bug and uh, in, in development he was doing. Was, There's no bug. And uh, my wife, who I was working with at the time, went and sat down with him and was like, you know, there's a uh, there's a bug. Well, let's, let's call him Vadim for the sake of it. Do you, do you see do you see my I screen? I do, but I need to load it up so everyone else can see it. So don't fix it yet. Okay, don't, I'm just watching. Get, what... Here we go. Teams. Why is that not showing? Teams meeting. Okay, Teams Vadim. Here we go. I can't make so it big. So you see now? Big. Hang on, I've got to make it big. I've got to make it nice and big for everyone. Everyone likes it bigger. They don't like it small with him. So my wife, she went up to him, right? Exactly the same bug, but she, obviously beautiful, stunning woman, that she's my wife, uh, but was like, oh, I've, Vadim, well, let's call him Vadim for the sake of it. His name wasn't really Vadim, but let's call him Vadim. Oh, Vadim, I, I must have done something wrong. I, I've obviously, um, I, I've broken it. Um, but could you help explain how how is the right way to use this this software to do this what I'm what I need to do? And he's like, oh no, you do everything right. It's me. I have bug. Uh, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> that's 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 how you do it. You because and, and effectively that that's what the training is basically saying that it's you need to uh, go in there as though it's a bomb. You're diffusing a bomb situation. Okay, you see now. Look, there's a big gaping hole, Vadim. Yep. That's a yep. bug in the chair. This is this is like like one element, and this is like another element. Look at the size of that hole there. Not connected. So this is what we need to do. Now you said you could do this in two seconds, five seconds, load it up and just fix it. I remember having to go one by one on each little thing and then weld them together. Yep. You, you see, I selected all verses. And then I click weld. Now it says like there's four vertices less. And now when I select this chair, it has no this. Yeah, but if you select the wrong things and you click weld, I remember breaking models completely because I've welded things I shouldn't be welding. Well, this is why you should select only vertices you have to weld, not all vertices. Also, there's uh, this, you see this border sub object mode. And I can select, and there you can you see it still it still selects. Yeah, so problem is still not fixed. Fix it. So this is uh, this is uh, why. Okay, you see now there's this. There's, this, this is what I'm remembering. This, yep. This, this, is start, this is where it starts weird things happen. Yeah. You see, like what what is this? What 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 kind of? Who makes a chair like this? Yes. What. How See, do this, you expect? Is, this is this is why I don't give Vulcan Labs uh, five stars out of five. This is why, how you expect to like fragment something like this. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, I let's 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 fix it another way. I will just delete it instead <gasps> of. It's gone. What have you done? Yeah. This, this uh, because you because it. I don't want to uh, <laughs> weld. I want to actually delete all uh, to fix this in proper way. Vadim, yeah. Vadim fixes it by deleting it. It's fixed. It's no, 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 I want to import. I want to import uh, the fresh FBX without any fi my fixes. If, actually, Vadim, you have you got there. You go. It's been destroyed in Wayfire. It's been destroyed, and there's nothing left. Job's done. <laughs> it's finished. <laughs> so now, instead of look, this is this is why I remember having to go one by one, finding these little buggers, and then clicking that weld. I don't want to do that. I'll end up killing myself, for them if I was doing that. If Cinti imagine doing that with a Cinti Studios uh, faceted, I, I would end up crying in the street. Well, if you want to demolish your object, you need to be sure no, it's ready. That. Now, uh, it's merge, not that easy. It's not that hard, actually. Merge see, by uh, distance. What's merge by distance in Blender? So merge, Blender. So there's a, a there's a you see this cup. Basically, it's just capping all open edges. Oh, okay, so you can just go around and click the cap. I remember the cap button. Cap button we can do. 
Yeah, it's actually still a problem because there there's go. this there's this vertex. I don't know what it doing there. <laughs> why why it is there? <laughs> what is purpose? It's a, what is your purpose, you dirty like, vertex? Like, no, well, this this is uh, actually um, this is not good. I mean, this it, it should not be there. This is vertex which has no any purpose and which makes everything. I mean. Now let me ask everyone in chat: Who else would you get to not only uh, like we're playing with reviewing assets to like try to blow things up, but also open up the meshes of assets, okay, and start dissecting them? There's no one else that does this. You can only get this here. We actually, we actually can fix other issues as well. You can see I, when I select this border and cl click Control A. It shows you all open edges. So let's. So this one, this, this part has no. That's got open edges too. Oh Jesus! Well, yeah, okay. there, so, there is no. So all you need to do is just click on this open edge. Click on cap here. Okay, now there is no open edge anymore. Well, there is another one. Now, Sengoku says that in Blender it's called Merge by Distance. So I will cap this one and probably this one yeah. also need capping. It's it's not that hard. I mean, if you know what to do, it won't be, it won't take too much time. Another one. So Sengoku, did you do it with Aquarius Max's stuff so that you could blow it up in Ray File? Is that completely unrelated? Uh, excuse me. Can you uh, repeat, please? I oh, know it's a question to chat. Somebody in chat was uh, was was doing what you're doing now using Blender. Also, while we're fixing mesh, another thing. Uh, Jesus, I have this new keyboard, and it for some reason it's not sure, not letting me use my uh, shortcuts. I hate new. So keyboards. you see this? Yeah, I not get used to it. You see, uh, it inter it overlaps with this uh, bottom part. It goes inside, so this is another thing you should avoid, ah. because uh, if you will use, if you uh, fragment this kind of object with decompose off, you will have like one fragment here, and then one fragment here, and they will be overlapping with each other. So when you will start simulation, uh, they will explode because they will try to push each other <clears throat> from each other from because they will share, share the same space. And they will. This is, this looks like explosion, so it's better to avoid such interpretations. And maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's good to have an explosion. No, no, this is not the kind of explosion you may want. <laughs> it's not, okay, it's, no. These aren't the explosions you're looking okay, for. Okay, you see. There okay, you now this is another one. Another one. Like like this is one element, and this is just one triangle. Just like the random triangle just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this guy, when modeled, he didn't finish this model somehow. He just got a bit drunk. Okay, you see, there's another vertex here and another vertex here. Why would you have just some great, crazy... Oh my god, just look just that. look at this. Look at like that crazy what vertex. What's that there well, for? This is, this is definitely not the way you should model... Wow. I, I prefer just to delete all this. Exactly, just delete them and just then just close them off with a new one. Go, look, job done. That looks beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> just turn. <laughs> okay, now it looks like... I I guess there are a lot of other uh, weird topology issues, but I think for now that's all. I mean, there's no any open edges. You see? There you like oh, uh, look at him! It's beautiful. Yep. Oh, Looks like I deleted one here. When I removed this vertex, I accidentally removed another one. No problem. So let's uh, export it. Uh, 
Mm. Right, you stick it in your way fire. Actually, actually, let me export it to the my desktop. Otherwise, I will just spend a lot of time just looking for this. <laughs> your hard drive is <laughs> going to be full of chairs. Yeah. Uh, okay. How can I send it back to you? Uh, you, 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 you you could drop it in Teams, but I'd say it'd probably be easier if you load up uh, in Unity. In Unity. Okay, okay. okay, let me then share this. I would like the chair though, but you know, Sengoku's got a very valid point. He does. Maybe. Oh, wait a second. I need I need to share my Unity screen, right? You do. Now. You do need to share your Unity screen. Uh, Sengoku says. The artists probably do this on purpose for copyright issues for them, so that he mm. knows mm -hmm. if anyone copies his chair, they goes actually those were there. There's my secret verts that I put in, like a, like an artist's signature on his painting. I don't know. I mean, maybe every it, single it, one of it, his models has got like not six enough feet. to have this topology just to be <laughs> sure that this is your model. <laughs> no, you need to have the secret hidden vertices. Laying around. Okay, uh, do you? I do. do I you see, see my. I, I, that chair looks. That now chair is going to be in your nightmares for days to go. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, no. I get used to deal with all kind of weird meshes, and trust me, this is this is the this is very very friendly weird mesh. Relative do, you, to do you get people sending meshes. you their meshes saying that this mesh doesn't work in Rayfire and you having to fix of them? Of course, of course, of course. Uh, well, uh, how else I will help uh, users if I won't know what is the problem? If somebody sent you an entire Cinti Studios collection of art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, this is the thing. Uh, Cinti Studios uh, models, they don't have this kind of stupid... Uh, uh, Issues, you see, they have kind of open ages, but they don't. I don't, I don't remember they having this weird topology, words with weird triangles, going nowhere with no reason. Uh, well, I can understand sometimes this happens when you model objects. So, let's go. Let's go. Do you, given your experience, and you know, like you because industry, well, uh, let, let's let's be honest. I I don't think uh, this guy who created this chair he expected someone to fragment it, because if you just want to put this chair as a static mesh, or maybe even you want to simulate it, you won't have any problem, right? So, I guess he just didn't spend this extra time to make sure. It's good enough for demolition. How dare he think that in five years' time somebody wouldn't want to fragment this Okay, chair. you see now? Look at that. It's beautiful. Look at that, Vadim. Five now minutes in Blender. Do you know what? I'm going to clip that in, uh, in YouTube as its own little video showing how to, how to get a, a model that previously would make you cry that now would make you sing not even sigh well this is yeah uh, this is very important this is the uh, half of success of fragmenting object is the proper topology of your mesh i mean i'm trying to explain to people i mean i wish uh it will be that easy just to take any geometry and fragment it and to get clean and perfect fragments but uh, you have to do some extra work and uh to be sure, you you use correct mesh if you want to get uh, if you want to demolish it. Basically, Vadim, you've taken fourteen years of work to get to this point, and as well as asking for people's money when they're buying Wayfire, all you're asking is them to spend a few minutes in getting the preparation for their models. They don't need to, they don't yep. need to spend fourteen years to get their models ready. They just need to spend a few minutes, like we've seen, inside uh, the 3D modeling application of their choice. And the Sungoku well, said... Well, of course, of course. If you want, you, let's say, if you want uh, some texture to look nice on your geometry, you spend your time creating all this UV mapping, right? Exactly. 
So this is the same. If you want to demolish an object, you want you need to make sure it's demolishable. Uh, well, again, if you want uh, to look your fragment, you, you want to get clean and nice fragments and not what you get before, like with this uh, absence of inner surface, like then, yeah, you need to spend some time, maybe some more time to be sure that your mesh is right. And sometimes people might not even care because like if that chair is going to get blown up by a by a big bomb or something, all you care is that it, it blows off into little pieces. And yeah, stick a double-sided shader on might have been good enough because um, as the piece blows off, then it might fade away. You know, just it has a... Do you have a script on there automatically that you could say a uh, fragment... Uh, De decomposes after five seconds or something, or would would I need to put a script on each and every single uh, fragment? Can you can you can you explain again? Uh, yeah, I'm so not sure. so if if this now you say you you know like this fragmented chair, when the mm -hmm. pieces fall down, I want them just to disappear after about yeah yeah. Seconds. There's a fade. There's a fade. actually I was going to show you how to demolish it in runtime. Oh yes. I mean, now, just, now that the chair will works, enough, it will just drop. It will, will, will it be enough? I don't know. It looks like a big chair. Smash it, I mean, with him. Smash it. Take take our, take our frustration out. That that unity, his 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 single plane oh, again. Caused this us is to just crash. how uh, how it works. I'm, let me let me start over. So I'm just adding this widget component, and this is the component which handles runtime demolition. So this this is a refire widget. <laughs> Yep. So and here I click at start and initialization at start. So what, what does the other one do? What's the app must the app method? It means that object will be part of simulation from the beginning, from the when I start play mode. And the other uh, and the other one is, is is what what does the other one do? Another one is by method that means that it won't be part of simulation and uh, it won't be simulated, it won't be demolished, it won't get collider rigid bodies. Until I will click this initialize button, or you, or will use initialize method. So this way, you actually can have hundreds of objects in your scene, and only initialize them so they will be part of simulation only when you need. Lovely. Let's say Much maybe better, player getting getting closer this yeah. way. Uh, so here my one. dynamic. Next second thing you should make sure uh, set the motion tab to runtime. Of Otherwise, course. you'll just simulate. And basically, that's it. So uh, I can keep the rest of the uh, properties by default. But the chair doesn't have a rigid body of it on it. Anything like that? Okay, there is no ground, so it's over. Okay, there is no ground at all. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't expect to demolish anything. Here, so you need to let's... always expect to demolish things when you wake up in the morning. You were, you're making ray fire. So like, what what am I going to demolish today? <laughs> okay, I guess that's, that <laughs> box will be enough. <laughs> but the chair doesn't have a rigid body on it. It's just got your rigid. It doesn't even. It doesn't need a rigid body on or anything like that. It will get it. Uh, so let me just start play mode and hit pause. So you see now it get this mesh collider and it's dividing. Oh, I was gonna, so where, where's the mesh collider? So you, the first thing you need to make sure that you don't already have a collider. Remove. So uh, you, no, 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 no. You can have you can have mesh collider. You can have rigid body. Okay. Uh, in this case, we'll use uh, what you already have. I mean, maybe you have some tricky. You won't have some tricky properties for your rigid body or for your mesh collider. So if you don't have all these components, you, it will get them. And then you can see it was demolished in runtime fragments. And you was talking about uh, the how fade. to yeah. get get rid of the objects. So there there is this fading. Uh, you just need to make sure it initiates on demolition. And there's lifetime. This is the time while uh, it will be simulated. And this is a random uh, variation for fragments. I just let me just keep it as this. And this is a fade time, a time it will take to fade actually down. And this is a way to get rid of this fragment. So I'll choose the scale down. 
And no. Oh, there we go. Smash it to pieces. Now it fade. Fade, you dirty buggers. Fade. <gasps> now that's it. Well, and, and now they've left. They've gone from the 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 view. They've, are they still there though in the in the hierarchy? Uh, no, they were destroyed. But uh, you can actually uh, reset it. There's a way to like here. You can see this action when object will be uh, original object. So right now, when you demolish it. It's getting destroyed, but you can deactivate it, so it will stay in your scene. Wow! So you can see it's now here still, and I can reset it. Now we got a question: Can you change the material being simulated, i.e., glass versus rock? So I, I assume is that now when uh, it has default. Yeah, in physics here it says yeah. right now it's concrete. Well, yeah, the, the, this is important when you actually have, uh, when you simulate objects with different materials, cool. uh, then it, it means because uh, the collision strength will be different for objects with different material. I mean, if you have a lot of objects and you simulate them as dense rock, they will interact in the same way, uh, just like if they will be glass. But if I, like, if you change it to glass now, it won't make the make more fragments appear will it i need to defragment no no it, again. it affects to uh, solidity which uh, is calculated when object collides i mean right now you can see there's this solidity property it's 0 0.1 it was decreased on purpose uh, with value one it should looks like in real world i mean if i will set it to one and set it to back to concrete i mean this time it should not be demolished because Means some concrete. If we would fall from this, oh, maybe click, one meter. Click play, click play. Let's see what happens. Oh, so excited! There you go. Okay, now. So I made this uh, solidity property ten times lower by default, so it will be demolished. <laughs> because people are buying your thing because, to demolish things. Yeah, It'll be like yeah, it isn't demolished anything. We it is, yeah. but concrete's really yeah. strong. <laughs> you, you, you're just making, uh, I'm just making everything much more fragile as it should be in real world. So if you change it to glass, then change material type to glass and click play. Well, it will be demolished in the same way. There we go. Because there you go, because it, because it's fragile. Yeah, that's basically what you're saying. It's it's your preset. So now well, the difference you... is the difference is if I will maybe drop it from this height, it will be demolished. Okay, and if I will change it to back to concrete, it probably won't be demolished. No, it also okay. won't demolish. <laughs> well, it's just a matter of you know playing with your scene, your objects to find out uh, the correct materials and uh, properties, so it, they will interact with each other as you want. If I, if you want to change now the chairs fragments, right? Is it too late, or can you still refragmentize this chair? Uh, um, like, can you repeat, please? You know, we, we, before when we did, <laughs> we changed it to be slabs or mm -hmm. whatever. Can you now do that again now? In, in runtime? No, no, like ne before we click play, because we uh, okay. you've already yeah, made yeah, the yeah. chair. Uh, well, yes. So this is the thing. Uh, by default, when you demolish in runtime, it demolishes to Warner fragments. I mean, there here there is no properties to change this fragmentation type for in rigid component. Ah, okay, so it's always it's always the, the it's always uh, Warner, ah, but okay. you can you can add shatter component here, uh, and uh, in this uh, mesh demolition properties here it enables this use shatter, and now you can uh, select fragmentation type you want. So in this case, it will use this shatter uh, properties to demolish object in the runtime. Oh, wow. So now if we want to have 100 pieces of splinters. Well, yeah, you can set it this here. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, well, but obviously it will be too much fragments for runtime fragmentation. That worked. Well, if you didn't notice, there was a was freeze. There, yeah, it was a slight. Yeah, maybe you can show this here. And let's let's actually increase amount of fragments. But wouldn't you? 
you'd use smoke and mirrors literally um put a particle effect can we have a particle effect that plays on impact okay so do you want me to keep the splinters yeah let's keep the splinters and put a particle effect that will yeah, basically... increase to make this uh this uh freeze more noticeable yeah so no it should take a second maybe now while, while you're adding this particle effect i'm gonna ask another question i like throwing questions at you okay with. oh yeah you need to add the certified debris there you go debris now, here we uh, go i was gonna ask you which is probably in here can i then add um something on the debris like a like a, a script or something a, comp a component so when when the tree smashes it leaves wooden splinters i can then pick up the wooden splinter as an item you know what i mean so uh every every fragment is actually a game object with a with a screen yeah. attached to it. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, I was uh, I was thinking you want to particle debris. I do, I do, I do want particle debris. I want but lots you... of things. I'm asking I'm asking you two completely <laughs> different things at the same time. Yeah, yeah, because uh, <laughs> I get confused. So let 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 let's let's start with fragments first. Uh, let, let's get to particles a bit later, just so it won't be just too much for one shot. So uh, here you can see I set it to two hundred and sixty-three. Yeah, a lot of a lot of. It's not going to crash your Unity, causing two hundred and twenty <laughs> gig of memory, is it? Well, oh, it works fine. <laughs> so, so just don't do it on a plane. Even, even, Madin, even, even don't even do it on a plane. Yeah, just whatever <laughs> yeah, you do. This is the most important <laughs> thing. <laughs> so this is here's the thing: if you if you resetting your object, it will. Uh, you can you can see that there was a yeah. there, there's a spike drop, but if I will reset rigid, <laughs> in this case it, there's no this no no such spike. Also, you can even optimize it even better if you will. Like this time, as you can see, it says here use. Meshes. So when you fragment object first time, it saves all the meshes, but not game objects, not the actual fragments. Whenever you reset object. It destroys fragments, but you can reuse them as well. In this case, second demolition, it's instant. So, is the trick then to uh, have your your chair uh, fragment itself and blow up when you're nowhere near it, and then it and then it resets itself, and then when the player comes next to it. It's nice and seamless and not laggy. I mean, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, I mean, this is what I want to show that uh, there's even you can even use this runtime caching. You can see it disabled now. You can set it to buy fragments per frame. How and much memory is that going to eat up? I mean, obviously you can't do this on a mobile phone, but you'd. Do they need to have a powerful computer to be playing you know, this game? Uh, to be honest, I myself, uh, I'm not testing it a lot on uh, all the cell phones because there are a lot of different cell phones and uh, I can only tell it uh, how other users use, uh, test it and uh, so far I can tell they very satisfied. No but again, this it depends works. On how it you can... works on a mobile as well. Of course. Of course. Oh my gosh. Well, no, yeah, of what? course. This is why we, we added support for Android and iOS. Uh, for actually runtime fragmentation. Well, you, you say, of course, we're used to Unity being a bit crap at some things. Let's be honest. We love it, but it's also a pain in the bum. Uh, I love the chair just fell down and breaks. Well, this is what, a, uh, how a... runtime catching works because it, uh, it's not demolishing object at the first collision, but it actually uh, caches by three fragments every frame. Like, accordingly, it is by fragments per frame. Actually, here by four fragments, but I can set lower. So when a chair collides, it start. You can see here it start caching fragments, <laughs> and only then they collide. <laughs> yeah, but there's also this skip first demolition checkbox. So this is a combination you can use to kind of start pre-cache your uh, fragments for an object which is about to be demolished. 
I love so it because it, it makes you think, oh, it's safe. It didn't break. And you go yeah, into now, it, like, see, oh, it's so good. All the meshes already cached. It already says here, pre cached Unity meshes. So next time it will collide, just fall. <laughs> but it's still, as you can see, it still uh, took less than 30 frames per second because it has to create all these game objects, yeah. actually. And uh, this is why you actually can reset it with game objects, not deleting them here. You can see I set here, reuse fragments at reset. So when I reset, these fragments still staying here already. You can see. So in this way, you can kind of uh, create a lot of fragments without uh, frame per, f f frames frame per second drops. And uh, well, that's lovely, man. Well, right, how because, do I? Because how yeah, do I... People, I mean, I mean, people they kind of trying to demolishing objects, and they say, "Oh, this is slow, and uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time learning it. I just want to get everything <laughs> right now, and I want to have hundred hundred of fragments without uh, frame per second drop." And uh, I'm, I just want to show that it is possible to do something like this. You just need to get a little bit deeper from the basic properties, and then you will be able to create something more interesting. I love it. I, I don't want to read a manual. I don't, want to, I don't want to spend any time. I don't want to learn anything. I just want it to do everything with no effort. It doesn't. One star. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this is kind of, uh, I don't know, frustrating for me sometimes because, you know, you're working hard to add some cool features just to make just to make uh, the possibility wider for people to use it and more versatile and then people some people start complaining that there are too much features and they want to create something without all this uh, a huge amount of buttons and uh, sliders and uh, spinners <laughs> just a couple of buttons will be enough but it doesn't work like this i love it I love it. Um, the chat says we can pretty much expect Diablo Immortal to be using this on mobile. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is, that, is, that, is there a new Diablo game in development on the mobile? Uh, Fresh Meat says I can see all the potential with this. Black Mage says it's so beautiful. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks. It is beautiful. It's crazy. Now, what's the biggest thing that you've broken? In in uh, in Unity, not because I know 3D Studio Max. You know, we, we can we can we can blow up the world. You've you destroyed that dome in your showreel. What's oh, the biggest you... thing? What's the biggest model? The biggest mesh, and the most fragments you've created inside Unity. Oh, you want a lot of fragments? Yeah, but you, know, you don't yes. have to, you don't have to do it in that way. But what? No, 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 no. This is actually the good uh, <laughs> way to show you. Really? You can see, you see, this time I I will just demolish the Warner fragments, and here I so here you can see there's uh, 15 fragments, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, we 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 already saw this uh, reference. Let, let me let me just okay. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Without runtime caching, just. Uh, Shatter. Just a basic demolition which I created the first time. There you go. That was yeah. nice. There you go. Yeah, nice big. And big here chunks. you can see this this uh, limitation there. This depth. It's one by default. That means that object can be demolished just once. Yeah. Let me put my, let me put my glasses on. Okay. Well, if I will set it two, it means that every fragment can be demolished uh, again. Oh. And okay. there is also this time uh, save time uh, value. It means that. Uh, Every fragment, uh, after it will be created, for 0 0.2 seconds, it uh, won't be possible to demolish it. So it will be prevent it, will, it prevent it from the further demolition. So I will decrease it to 0 point maybe five. And uh, actually, I'll keep one and make solidity even lower. Even this lower. is this is this is just uh, to show you. This is I, I mean I like I, I really like doing this. <laughs> okay. This is completely not the game reference. You can see a lot of freezes, but now you can see there's much more fragments yes. because every fragment was demolished here. 
It's a good because thing. You, it's, you, it says here demolition dev two out of two, so we can yeah. maybe there some it's fragment. Some smaller piece. I can see. I can see a really small, nice piece over there. Um, so it's a good but thing you fixed more. this chair, isn't it? It's a good thing you fixed. Yeah, chair. yeah. That's why I fixed it. Because, exactly. Uh, Ima to... Imagine doing this with the chair before. And now, now I will set here dev to three. It means that every fragment will be possible to fragment even further. This is the. Vadim, what you're doing now is showing people how co uh, COVID spreads. One person now gives it to three people, and like so now, <laughs> look yes, how many exactly, pieces exactly. are. Exactly. So as you can see, there's all fragments. It's all the three def three out of three. So it means that I just wanted to select some fragments which is not the most. Uh, uh, second or first layer uh, def and then just demolished again but because i have very low solidity they basically demolish demolish instantly so uh just let's let's get while let's set here maybe six and this will take some time no, are we basically. still on, we're still on originally only 15 fragments so in the settings no, 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 it's, no, in the, in, will... it said the original was 15 and that 15 was was by six by six by six by six. Yep. Okay, now we see there's three out of six. Okay. Fragments. Okay, now. Is it because your time's gone? Oh no no, this is because this is because I reached my limit maximum amount of fragments. It sets here one thousand. Oh, see? let's let's increase that. Put, make that I, ten. I already make, have. Make to, that uh, ten hundred. Make it ten thousand. Yeah. yeah yeah, this is why it stopped fragmentation. On, make, it ten, make it ten. Make it ten thousand within the limit. Okay okay, and then in this case we need to create this uh, manager script <laughs> manually. Let's do this. <laughs> Yeah, I like to do this a lot. And here you can set here, let's say 10,000 fragments. There you go. Uh, now let's just wait and see. <laughs> I really doubt someone will do something like this. I'll in, do it. Inside, inside game. Yes, I'll do this in a game. <laughs> but it looks interesting. And if you this rewrite is, I'm it. Talking, talking, talking. Availability. I mean, uh, you already can create something uh, current uh, workstations cannot handle. But once e once ECS and dot stuff is all working in here, then that you wouldn't even need to cache that. That would be working perfectly. Well, ECS will only simulate it fast enough, but you still have to fragment them. Holy crap! This is a mess. I mean, I'm not even. Seeing anything? <laughs> is it, is it, sprinkle on the ECS magic dust. Smash a piece of chalk on a table into dust during runtime. Yes. So now, if you rerun this, that click on that re re you know magic button that you did, then this would work again with no no lag. Is that what you're saying? Because it's cached. It's still going. Uh, well, yeah, let's actually select this manager and uh, 6,250, 60, 70. You see it's increasing here. But it, but is it cached now that you could click redo, re, re fragment or whatever, and then it would you, be... <laughs> you know, actually, I didn't try this yet <laughs> during this Let, match. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't work for a second layer. Well, because uh, the fragments may be different, you see. Oh my god, this is yeah, this will start happening again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like to draw everyone's attention to <laughs> Unity hasn't crashed either. So, uh, we've probably we've got our 10,000 fragments. Yeah, yeah, we will reach this limit right very soon. <laughs> what is it saying? <laughs> Size is five million. What? What is that? Uh, this is five units. Oh, this is the size of the original chair. Five uh, point four units. Well, this is like crazy amount. How many? Of how many have we got now on the swing? I can't. I can't even work in <laughs> Unity. 
Well, we actually have 10,000. Okay, it 10, it was... Yeah, now, now it just simulates them. Now it's pure simulation without demolition. Now, if you only had it one level, but you said fragment size a thousand, would that would that explode? Uh, what again? So you know you, the amount if if you don't if you have it depth one. Yep. But you have fragment amount one thousand. Mm -hmm. Would that and... would that work? Or would that crash? Okay, let me. Okay, I guess I can turn off this, right? Yeah, <laughs> because that's, that's it crazy. simulates very slowly now. I can't even <laughs> select this mess. You proved, uh, okay, you proved so the, what, you proved what the you point. Want to do? You wanted me to set right, here put, uh, 1,000? No, no, keep that as 10,000. Let's be generous. Okay. Uh, and put, the, here? Put, put the depth back down to 1. Okay. Okay. Fragment amount 1,000. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what you mean. Well, I kind of have to increase cap here because just you know, I don't think someone will try to Basically, run time. You try to prevent them stabbing themselves with a the kitchen knife. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, anyway, so it'll be slow now. But let me let me increase this cap. So it's in mesh because demolition. then you would be able to reset the rigid and uh, it will be cached, wouldn't it? Because it's the first depth. <laughs> I will try all the things that I shouldn't. <laughs> it's just fresh meat. Yes, exactly. That's what. That's exactly what we should be doing. A thousand. There we go. All right. Let's click it. See what happens. Well, that was that worked really well. Okay, reset rigid. Is that a thousand pieces? No, you know it's actually not thousand pieces. It's only three hundred seventy-three because uh, this is this amount. Uh, 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 let me create one thousand. Uh, this is amount, not fragments, but amount of point in point cloud because Voronoi engine, it uses point cloud. Ah, so yeah. it fills this bounding box with points and a lot of points, they uh, outside of the mesh. So they do not generate any kind of fragments, but I will set here up to 3000 right now just to compensate. But even then that 300 was, it didn't, well, it didn't that's... lag a lot. It, it did like it wasn't even noticeable. Well, you can see here. Oh yeah, now well, we've, now we've hit time, something. Yeah, yeah. Now it's now we've got. There you go. There's a spike. yeah, fifteen frame per second. If I click that reset rigid and watch it, let's see now. Well, this is because there are a lot of collision happens. You see. It start lagging when there's collision among fragments. Yeah, but again, ECS can handle that. Collision yeah, this stuff. is can totally be handled by ECS. I mean, fragmentation already happened. Uh, as you can see, I have here reuse fragments. So when I click reset, uh, all these fragments already here. They are already waiting just to be activated. So no fragmentation happens right now. This is crazy. And uh, it's pure physics simulation lagging. But yeah, I guess ECS will handle this. And you can see, well, there's still not 100, it's only 800. Uh, I mean, not 1,000, but 800, <laughs> 7, 792 <laughs> fragments. <laughs> Well, so not, only not. there's only there's only <laughs> seven hundred and ninety. Yeah, this is this is why it's again <laughs> getting back to the mesh quality. This is why it's very important to have really nice topology because with nice topology you can create any kind of simulations, demolitions. I mean, hundreds, thousands of fragments. But if you have just one stupid plane, <laughs> you just <laughs> fail to fragment it. Oh my word. This is insane.
This is just a chair, everyone in chat. We've been playing just a chair. Imagine what you could be doing. Right, well, in your own just project. Emotion. There are a lot of other like connectivity, collapse, all, all other nice features for demolition. Uh, Unity can only handle so many rigid bodies. Every fragment has its own collider, or so can you reach the max possible colliders very soon? Yeah. So each of those little fragments has got its own little mesh collider on it. Of course, you can't yeah. use any other mesh in uh, any other collider because uh, again, if you will use box collider, they will just explode. But actually, uh, you know, I have one new feature which is not released yet. I'm working on. Actually, I've finished it, but it's not released yet. I added it here, you know, or near this one. Uh, so I don't know how to show you. Maybe I need to pre-shatter it. This is a new feature, actually, yeah, showing this first time. We're getting an exclusive chat. Uh, this time I will use not mesh because I'm using this on the root with all the fragments. You see here? Yeah? Uh, so I have here mesh root. Start. I'm not demolishing anything, just simulating. Come on, what's oh sorry, I forgot to to disable this one. Oh, let me get in closer. So the idea is uh, that was actually a big problem before. Uh, when you have uh, fr uh, fragments, like maybe let me, like this one, you see it uh, overlapping with this one. If I will open a mesh collider, you see that they, they, these colliders, they are overlapping with each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, because I have this uh, ignore near, well, not for this one, but here, here, ignore near colliders, it means that uh, it's ignoring this collider, so they're not exploding. It, it falls as one object, and only here uh, it starts colliding with ground. So just to show you the difference here, how it worked before, you see, it mm -hmm. start, start breaking in the air because uh, because of the overlapping of all these fragments. Just let me sit here inactive. In this case, don't fall down. So this is how it worked before. Because of this overlaps, they all try to push each other. Uh, because this is, this is when you said it's the kind of explosions you don't want. Yeah, this is how it works in current or at least uh, latest mm -hmm. build, like you have. Uh, and in the build I have, I have this new checkbox, ignore near, which allows you to simulate objects even with overlapping colliders. They just don't collide with each other. You can move, you can start moving. You can see it start colliding only with uh, fragments which are far enough, but it doesn't collide with uh, fragment which is near this fragment. Now, if you get me? I do get you. I think it's wonderful. But then, well, now, yeah, actually, this is a long-awaited feature. Yeah. A lot of people waiting for it, and it will be released soon. Now, you know your fade, your fade feature. Could yep. you, uh, can you fade so that it destroys the colliders, uh, but it leaves? Ah, uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. So if you if you go after five seconds, remove the rigid body and the collider, but leave the actual mesh yeah yeah uh, let me show you so you need to use another fading type it's called seam exclude so here you can see it 
it's living and then the old smash collider is disabling but can we um there we go well it's become a static basically yeah. now we've got um oh son goku just said what i was thinking um now there's loads of um mesh combine tools out there that have like even runtime capabilities um so goku says, i thought the new feature would be after everything is set it combines the fragments into one mesh and only gives you one mesh collider so a does wayfire have its own mesh combine uh in runtime and if it doesn't would it work with other third party uh combine mesh combine um. Well, I'm not sure I understand you, but there there is a mesh uh, combining component right so, now. So that chair falls down on the floor after five seconds. It's now re remade as one mesh. Ah, this is what you mean. Ah, aha, uh -huh, I see, I see. No, the, this is actually a good idea, but there is no such feature. But this is actually a great idea. I, no, no one, no one tell me about this before. But you've got two of us independently came up with the same idea at the same yeah, time. Yeah, so great it's... idea actually. Whoever said this, I didn't expect this because uh, you can see there's this. Okay, where are these fragments? You know, well, here's this chair root, and I already have this combined component here, uh, which you add to root and mm -hmm. it combine and it creates. Okay, I can now delete all these fragments. So you already have a combine. Yeah, well, I already have it. So, so you can you can just trigger that combine to happen yeah, in runtime. Yeah, yeah. You see, this uh, just uh, this is just a different uh, a component. Yeah, here it is combined mesh. So, after, just, so after five seconds, we can okay now yeah. call the method to combine. Great idea. Yeah, you know, I will I will write this into my to do list right now. There you go, Sengoku, you, you win a free copy of Wayfire for that idea. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Great idea. Why I didn't tell about this, I don't know. Cool. I was, I was about to say that uh, Sengoku and I, great minds think alike, but then, you know, don't want <laughs> to offend Sengoku. Uh, this, see, this chair is the gift that keeps on giving. You've got so many different things that you can do with Rayfire. Um, it's insane. But like now if I if you had a gun, because in your videos you were showing showing a gun shooting it, does the gun itself need to have any functionality added to it? Or is it just the fact that the the physical bullet from the gun is going to interact with, with Rayfire? Uh, you actually want me to show how this works? Yes, I just... do. Well, uh, actually, I added this uh, refire gun component just so users will have something at least to be able to sh create some shooting. But of course, I understand that there are a lot of other, I mean, plugins it's designed, developed for creating shooting. So my gun is uh, kind of provide uh, methods just to put them inside other uh, shooting uh plugins well, chat uh, says well, can we see the bomb we'll see the bomb feature after the shooting then sengoku says i haven't seen the mesh collider on it or yeah so your combine it combines the mesh and it creates a mesh combiner a uh, mesh collider as well or it just uh again what, 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 what your your combine method that you have yep it can it creates the mesh collider yes creates well. one mesh well i guess you can because a mesh can collider add... can just say you give me the mesh from the mesh if, if, it, if it has a mesh then you can use a mesh collider on it because by definition well, yeah you just cannot mesh. mesh collider and it will create convex mesh which yeah. will wrap all this mesh of course it's not a problem i just i guess i will add this feature in, okay in two hours it will take it two hours just to add it and to test as always, make, make it a two-hour feature and charge people fifty dollars for it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the gun. It'll be my gun. Just as an object. 
Yana says, it just occurred to me, if you are destroying office furniture, why destroy an office chair when you could be destroying a printer, a PC, a PC load letter? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> Yolan, do, do printers upset you? <laughs> do, are you angry at, at a printer? You should be angry at your 3D printers. Well, Sengoku should be angry at the 3D printer. Okay, so here's my gun. And uh, if you want to demolish object using guns, you need to uh, enable here this damage feature, which allows you to apply to collect damage here in this value. So you can apply, set some maximum damage for different objects. It may be oh, different. Oh, nice. And uh, every gun has its own uh, damage value, which it applies. Every shot, so let's say maybe 10, and maybe oh, it's impact. office space. Chat is just saying like office space. Is that, is that my, that's my stapler. That's my stapler. Um, so you're gonna move the target, and it was, and it will aim at the target. Okay. You're a bad shot, Vadim. You're a bad shot. Okay, wait a second. Okay, it seems like I forgot something. Is it gonna Start. work? Or... Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Damage. You got. Uh, you, you, you're saying demolition type is one time, but you're you having click play. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not get used to streams, so <laughs> that's my excuse. <laughs> okay, click the play button, then it should start working. Okay, yeah. There you go. Wow, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I don't want them to be that fragile. Freshman says, I have to sleep outside after this once my wife finds out. I lost the raffle and I bought it anyway. Your wife will kill you if you if she finds out that this was on sale. Uh, and you didn't get it in the sale and you wanted it at the time if you didn't know you wanted it at the time it was on sale then all right but if you knew you wanted it and you didn't buy it then you got yourself to blame so this is how, how we can shoot objects you see since my gun uh, damage is 10 and this chair can handle 100 damage it takes 10 shots to demolish it Okay, now we can see it. Now it's 60. I can finally have trees that I can chop. Oh. Have bits of splinter from trees coming. I don't know. Should I should I show you anything else <laughs> well, about gun or? They want to see the the bomb. They want the. They, there's apparently you've got a bomb. Do you have a bomb, Vadim? Yep. Well, it's it's boring. Well, it's just a bomb. It's <laughs> just a bomb. Just a bomb. It's what else you can bomb. expect from the bomb? I mean, guys, I mean, uh, sorry that I'm using this setup. I just didn't expect to <laughs> show you just uh, the improvising. I'm no, just improvising. Dude, I love it because it so. shows. Because normally, what well, people be like, oh, you know, here's here's a model that I've carefully prepared. And I know would work perfectly, which is rubbish. We don't we don't want it to be something that's been perfectly planned, um, because then you don't know you know all the bizarre stuff that can happen. We've seen now. We chose we chose a, a box that had a, a a plane on it, which was not a, it wasn't actually a basic plane. It had, it had you know some weird lip to it. And it and it and it caused a problem with OBS running at the same time. You got you got everyone at home factor in that I've got multiple things running on this machine. Then we had a chair that had uh, weird random verts and and gaps in all over the place, and that you showed how to fix that in 3D Studio Max relatively quickly. Um, for me, it would take longer. And Son Goku in chat mentioned that with Blender, you've got buttons that pretty much do it for you. Oops. Oh my word! Oops. And now we've got that same chair back inside Unity 
in ray fire and now it's blowing up we've blown up into um 10,000 pieces earlier and 700 quite well it's beautiful Sherlock Holmes tree explosion in unity with ray fire this is how we're going to use it anyway exactly this is how we're going to use it we're going to use it exactly like this put it in random things keep on playing with buttons until we get what we want would be nice to combine it with digger destroy the terrain with real dirt rubble laying all around it that would be a great integration have you seen digger Vadim? you know we it mm, turns the terrain so. into um voxels so you've got your normal unity terrain and then you start digging and it will turn cut out that part of the terrain oh and i see it I thought about voxels. such idea but uh, well well, somebody's it, already made uh, it. It will need a lot of time. And, exactly. You don't need to because somebody else has already made it. But what you could do is make uh, ray fire work with it. So well, yeah. that would be awesome. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Voxels. Well, when he was on the stream, he told us it was Voxels. Should I should I explode something else? Or yeah. Enough. No, no. Explode something else. While we oh, oh. Explode things. Explode things. Um could the slice feature be used on trees well it's the um infinite slice so if you want it to slice through the tree in one like a lightsaber would slice yeah through it, a will, tree. it will cut whole tree but well, you, you see uh, th that was not kind of our specialization when we started to uh, port this plugin to unity i mean we already have this fragmentation library for demolition and fragmentation but then when I, I launched this plugin on Unity, people start asking for this kind of stuff. So this is kind of not what we worked on a lot before. And uh, this is something we are kind of starting only in Unity. And this, this, this is why not so advanced as fragmentation and demolition uh, and takes more time. Because we have kind of have to догнать. Ты знаешь, как переводится слово догнать? Like that, exactly what I mean, Shrinky Pinky. Exactly, I know what you mean. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, uh, I need, I need to find this word. <laughs> it's dugnatch. Uh, That's what dugnatch. it is. Dugnatch. It's dugnatch. Uh, so, uh, catch what? up. Yes, catch up. Here you go, catch up. Yes. Um. As they say in a slowly, slowly catchy monkey. Voxels in his is his ultimate terrain's not a digger. Um, yeah, so when he was on stream, I'm pretty sure he said that basically digger removes part of the terrain uh, and then it puts it in as voxels in that small part rather than the whole thing. I think is what you were saying. Can't remember. So it's, it's on the it's on the stream. You can watch the uh, the vod where I interviewed him. And I made a large penis out of voxels on the stream. Uh, uh, that was that was fun. That was an accidental pen. I made an accidental penis, uh, and it's on the vod section on Twitch. If you want to watch that. Um, so Vadim, should we give away a, a copy of Wayfire? Of course. Now you said we've got twenty copies to give away. Then you. Know, <laughs> Nice, nice try. <laughs> That's well. It's worth a shot. Nice, nice try, nice try. <laughs> yeah, it's worth a shot, isn't it? Give it a go. How how do you decide who will get it? I I I pick the person I like the most. And I can also. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I got a reset from the last one. Hang on. Clear all messages. Okay. So open giveaway so people in chat need to do type exclamation mark raffle so you need to be a follower to be eligible if you're not following click that follow button uh, and while we do I'd like to thank irish john earlier for his raid anyone that um, subbed and i may have missed you and your uh little uh, other things in chat like uh, bits and things if i've missed any of those exclamation mark raffle in chat to get your hands on one of the most exciting things to happen to the unity asset store since i announced mux was gonna come on the store uh <laughs> raffles and waffles uh 
And I like to point out that who was it in chat that said they already won it earlier, a few weeks ago? Uh, who was it in chat that said that they won it already? I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it was bit gamey. If you have already won it, uh, don't raffle again just so you can you can give it to your wife as a present. You know, get her chocolates instead. She might want to blow up things. Well, she might do. You never know. Just don't show her your credit card, fresh mate. Uh, and then you've been, don't forget the raid by Drag Dragon Slumber Raid as well. Thank you so much, Dragon Slumber. Missed that earlier in chat. Thank you, Dragon Slumber. We do another shout out for Irish John and Dragon Slumber, please. You beautiful, beautiful badges. And Vadim, tomorrow I've got Cinti Studios coming on. Now, did you know that they've made a racing car collection for no. in their Polygon style? That Vadim, their cars are modular so all of the parts of the car the car not every single part but you know the car doors open the windows the bumpers come off um the main component the undercarriage is a separate thing now all of those pieces of the car do you know what we should have loaded that car up and see if we can blow that car up um but you know i didn't want you to to do that Rayfire glass windows. Now, glass windows are normally just, um, they wouldn't say it's a plane. It could be actually, it might be a plane with a texture on it. Um, do you think a glass window would work then? Uh, well, there is a radial fragmentation type in shutter, which you can use for glass demolition go on, make me make me a make me a piece of glass now to break now it have to be it would have to be a, a, a because even even glass is 3d it's just you know depending on how thick it is so you wouldn't be able to make a plane then. Otherwise, we'll have the twenty megabytes of a uh, gigabytes of a. Uh, well, I, here's my box, I, my cube I was using as a ground. Yeah. So if, how Is it thin, good enough? How thin can you make it though? How thin can that be? If you go to your cube, uh, oh, transform. I see, I see. Make it really thin. Dangerously thin. Anemically thin. Right now, put a, uh, I'm afraid it will become a plane, and you know what happens. Exactly. Now this is this <laughs> is my, now don't yeah. No, look, it still works. Well, there is definitely something, some some weird topology issue with that plane on this. Yeah, um, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna find that mesh. I'm yeah, I totally to need that. <laughs> that was very really interesting. It for you. No, we, you know, this is not a problem to fix this kind of box. I mean, it's obviously bad that it, there was such problem, but it's only, uh, only you need to do just to give us the mesh, which caused problems and it will be fixed. All you need to do is give us the mesh and it will be fixed. I told you before, you say that kind of thing, I'm going to send you my co a complete collection of 1,000 <laughs> meshes. Because because uh, they're always, always, uh, it can't, it, it will never end. I mean, we dealing with this topology issues all the time and there is always something new we find every time. You just can't uh, pre be prepared for everything. Oh, I found and it. Hollow table. Yeah. There it is. So, uh, what exactly you want me to do with this radial fragmentation glass type? Can you move that impact then? Like, in say, say I, I shot it in the corner, and it and it. Oh yeah. Actually, let me use this gun. Well, again, uh, you need to use. Widget component. Yeah. And enable here. Make it uh, maybe inactive. So it won't fall to the ground. 
runtime demolition and enable here damage. Messi has a blue cursor. Yes, I've got a blue cursor. And enable use shutter here. I guess that's it. Oh my word! Oh my god! I love how he's got like the 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 impact as well. Makes it go in. Well, we can go. We can actually. Use some activation oh, here, oh, maybe Vadim, by Vadim, 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 yeah, Vadim, yeah, yeah, Vadim. yeah. Okay, right. I want the glass, okay, the impact to cause the broken glass effect, right? I mean, but, some uh, material you want special but, material applied, yeah, glass, but right, I don't want the pieces. To, to to come loose right all over the place I want the glass to have been impacted and cause and cause the crack yeah like you had there like the ball went into the glass yeah okay well, yeah I was distracted by the material can you can you right. repeat, please imagine imagine your your car is parked outside your house okay and the next door neighbor child has thrown a baseball into your car window because of the tempered glass, it won't break and smash everywhere. But what you would get is a ball, mm -hmm. make a make a round shape in your glass, like you had that beautiful indentation uh, and crack. But the rest of the glass is is okay. They have bulletproof glass, yeah, like bulletproof glass. It's like tempered glass. It's, it's, your car windscreen. If you got if you got a cricket ball hit your car windscreen. It's it's not gonna. Well, uh, if it's something Tesla, like this nothing... or what? yeah, yeah, exactly, something like that. Well, then what what else I have to do with this? Now those pieces. Yep. Do can can it be said that they don't then fall down that they stay in place? Well, they stay in place right now. Are you in play mode? They're staying in place right now. You are. Yes. That's true. You want, you want them to fall down? No, I don't. I wanted them to say that. Oh my oh. God! This is—it's like a bulletproof glass here now. Yeah, you can, you can just. Well, you won't get any uh, center if you will start shooting again because it's already demolished fragments. Go on, shoot again, shoot again, shoot again. All right. So now you would have. So you'd only get that one. Yeah. No, well, because you're. You fragment object at first, demolition, and then it's already fragmented, right? Yeah, but what if, like, exactly, yeah, bullet, concrete wall with lots of bullet holes in? How would that mm -hmm. work? Well, uh, wall with bullet holes. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. We, we, you, you want to get this kind of con. Uh, like a uh, center every at every shot yeah well that's not possible now unless unless you'll have different blocks of wall yes i was gonna say imagine would you be able to have uh ray fire then automatically segment that mesh into p squares mm. Well, you see, uh, I think it would, it can be done. I mean, not not now if you will work on this, but uh, it will generate all, so much unnecessary triangles because you will need to fragment mesh and then combine it, uh, the, the part which is not near the impact, back to the so one so mesh. Instead, instead, what you're basically saying in a very polite way is, why don't you have your original mesh made up of lots of smaller squares well uh, this is the way to create something like this uh, right now but if you want if you don't want to do this we will need to uh, work for some time to uh, to make it possible but in this case 
it will create mesh with so much triangles uh, that you will not use this. You see, you, we can create like, you make a shot, it, it fragments all objects like this, and then I combine, let's say, I combine all these fragments yeah. back to one mesh. I, I keep only these fragments yeah. uh, separated. So I combine all this mesh. I'm getting mesh with all these triangles. And then when I shoot again here, I get something like this with all these triangles on top of the new fragments. So all these fragments, they will have like, I don't know, a lot of triangles. They they still will look uh, uh, flat, but they will have all these triangles, which will it it won't be optimized. I mean, <gasps> oh Vadim, but then there's a couple of like uh, not only mesh combined but mesh simplifier stuff that runs in one time yeah, as well. Well, yeah, then we need to simplify, but uh, it it sounds easy, but uh, if you have some complicated texture with some uh, tricky UV mapping, then it will become not so easy just to simplify and to keep every, every UV mapping right. That I'm just thinking how this can be done in runtime. A lot of calculations. Oh, but maths is magic. Well, you know, I, um, I won't say it's not possible, but I need to think more about this. If you want a challenge, there you go. Uh, Wizards Done Code says, on the Neo FPS Discord, by the way, exclamation mark, Neo FPS in chat, uh, and in the Christmas stream, we played about with Rayfire, with Neo FP, with Chris from the Underlord Games, Neo FPS, showing how you can use Neo FPS and Rayfire together. So Wizards Done Code says, on the Neo FPS Discord, we are discussing the idea of using a mesh deformation to create the initial damage, once damaged enough, fragment with ray fire. Ah, so you're using something else first, and then ray fire on the on the on the remaining pieces. Okay, interesting. Well, yeah, that'll be a combination of different features. Yeah. Uh, Wizard Done Code says, imagine a metal wall with a window. First hit deforms the metal. Smash the window with more damage, fragment the wall. To be fair, why not well, just... You see, yeah, yeah. Every, every time you, you provide some new feature, immediately a lot of people start pushing it to the limits and add yeah. something. Create some challenge even, even harder and even more advanced. So, well, that's great, actually. Uh, Nimblenaut says, to be fair, why not just track the transforms of the hits on the mesh, then ray fire it? Uh, with the hits, just do a standard decals until X damage. Yeah, don't forget, you've still got decals. You can cheat things. Yeah, you could just put decals on it. By the way, we haven't announced the winner. Uh, everyone's been sitting there patiently, waiting to know who's won, Vadim. Shall we announce who the winner is? Okay. We're going to do a drum roll. That's my Russian drum roll. Nibble Noughts, Nibble Noughts, who just gave his, we all, we all know it's me. He says, we all know it's me, and then he won it. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> that is, Nibble Noughts. I mean, we all know it's me. Nibble Noughts, you've won. Please speak up in chat. Holy crap. <laughs> Congratulations, Winked. Now, we can't say it's not rigged, because he just said, we all know it's me. So, so there you go. Congratulations, Nibbley. You are a winner. What are you going to use? What are you going to... First, what's the first thing you're going to destroy? Nibble noughts. I hope it's a chair or a plane. It could well be a plane. Not plane, not yet. <laughs> oh, Vadim, you know what? I could talk to you for another two hours easily. I love having you on. You are such a laugh to have. You're a wonderful bloke. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Wait, uh, it's do you know what? It's half past one o'clock my time, which means for you, it must be, what, half past three? Yep. Oh my gosh, I'm keeping you up late. Now, we've been chatting since about ten past ten. So, we've gone over three hours. Yeah. And I feel we've only spoken about 5% of what 
Wi Fi. Well, is. there's a lot of we can talk, of course. We didn't talk even about connectivity and, uh, and other components that may take another hour for sure. Well, does that mean that you did you have a ni nice enough time, Vadim, that you're willing to come back again in the future? Yeah, of course. I mean, let's maybe in a half of the year, so we'll have enough some new stuff. Awesome. Um, Nibblenaut says I plan on using it for apocalyptic stuff in a single player game. That's another point. You got if people are sitting here wanting to blow things up. A lot of people are trying to stay away, trying to blow things up. If you're going to be doing multiplayer, you're going to need to sync all of that stuff. So keep your brains, you know, sensible with what you're doing. Um, don't try to make things explode too much when you can't handle it in your game. So yeah, a single player apocalyptic game sounds just up my alley. Uh, that was a great stream, Vadim. Thanks for the interview, says Fresh Mate. Thank, thanks, thanks everyone. Mate. Um, Mate, don't forget, tomorrow I've got Cinti Studios, so you can come back and type with your little fingers, Vadim, in chat. And if you ask any questions, I'll read it out for you. Well, I, I just want to say that uh, tomorrow we'll be on another um, <clears throat> birthday party, so if I won't get home, sorry if I will not be here. I'll pretend I'll pretend that I have questions from you and I'll say to them okay, yeah, I'll say I, I, by the I way delegate delegate yeah. this to you. <laughs> That's very dangerous. <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna get an email from Cinti <laughs> Studios going, Why did you, why did you insult us? You told Messi to, to, to sell all these insults at us. Huh? What did we do to you? <laughs> Well, Vadim, thank you again so much for coming in, thank mate. Thank you, thank you, Ron. Goodbye, goodbye, Baka. everyone. Uh, Dasudanya. Dasudanya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a lovely man! What a love. I've sent him the hollow table, by the way. I've sent him the hollow table. Oh my! If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.